The following is a live sports presentation of Glycod. G-L-I-C-O-D dot com. Glycod's coverage of Roy's Body Shop Oldham County High School's football starts now. Thursday night, football live from Buckner. It's week three, Fern Creek and Oldham County. Great to have you with us. I'm Chris Labar along with Joey Hamilton. Two teams, Joey, really trying to still settle upon a quarterback. A lot of quarterback issues on both sides. Uh, one side, you have a team that has uh, brought in a young man, and he's uh, done really well for them. And they, you know, if you want to talk about 500 being success, they're one and one. Then you have another team who has had some quarterback situations. Where one young man has come in and not played as well as they expected, and then the other young man has come in and now he has got injured, and the other young man, <laughs> you know, I don't want the names out, but the other young man's come back in, and we'll figure out what's going to happen tonight here with them. For Fern Creek, a very difficult test last week against a solid Johnson Central team, a lopsided score, but yet they're still putting up a lot of points. The coach is very excited about last week. He said that uh, it wasn't the outcome he was really looking for, but when you take a young team like that out of town, you know, they gain experience, they, they get better. So it's not like taking a veteran team. He said it's almost like going on a field trip. And for the Colonels, Zach Davis will get the start tonight. He started week one, did not start last week. So he is back shuffling. And despite the loss versus Shelby last week, the Colonels did some good things. Oh, the Colonels did some really good things. Uh, Coach Tayshawn McBroom is very, very happy with the uh, with the direction that they're going in. You know, it may not seem like they're doing what, but they're sh they're showing improvement. They're showing improvement despite no and two record. So uh, he's con they're continuing to put in work. Fern Creek and Oldham County just getting started on Glycod.com. Up next, Joey will connect with Josh Abel. He's in year nine as head coach of Fern Creek. That conversation when we come back to Buckner on Glycod. Your car's been damaged. Regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. Summer is here. That puts a lot of strain on your air conditioner. Are you ready? Call Thompson Heating and Cooling today for an HVAC checkup. Because the last time you want to find out your air conditioner isn't working is when you really need it. At Thompson, we offer a two-hour appointment window so you won't be kept waiting all day. We're fully stocked and prepared, and 90% of our calls are repaired that day. And as always, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call us today for express service. Surprisingly great rates? Contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Leslie Gilly in Crestwood today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. A lot goes into taking care of your property. You need equipment with more durability, versatility, and number one rated reliability built in. Like Kubota compact tractors that can do it all right, Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut, and the Sidekick utility vehicle built for hard work and fun at 40 miles per hour. Kubota equipment lives up to the highest standards. Yours. Visit your local dealer today. This edition of Coach's Comments is brought to you by Anderson Sales and Service in Crestwood. Making your life easier with quality products and quality service. Welcome back to Glycott Sports. I'm here with head coach Josh Abel from Fern Creek. We're here at Oldham County High School for tonight's matchup. 
Uh, coach, nice win last uh, two weeks ago against J-Town in the opener last week. You went to Lexington against a good Johnson Central team. Uh, your thoughts on that so far? Uh, it's always good to start the season with a win, um, especially when that's as close to a regional rivals you're going to get, right, until you get in districts for Bullet East and all that kind of good stuff. So it was always good to start the season off with that. A lot of kids played, so we were excited. That was our first uh, kind of what set the tone for us. And then, you know, we've enjoyed the, the Lexington Catholic trip the last two years. Um, last year we came out with a win. This year they, we, we got matched up with a, with a 4A powerhouse, and, and uh, our kids were, were astonished to, to see a team only throw the ball one time on film. And I think that kind of shell shocked us. And, and uh, you know, the best part about losing is you, you learn what you shouldn't be doing and hopefully you don't do it again. So uh, we struggled to tackle last week. Um, we, uh, we, 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 we always play hard. But last, year, last week we struggled to tackle and we, uh, we, stopped, we, we went dead uh, on offense with our execution in the second half. So, Coach, what kind of opportunities do you see for your team down the road uh, here in the season? We, there's plenty of opportunities. we got a great schedule. Right, it's a tough schedule. Um, there are very, very few games you can circle and say you're guaranteed going to lose that one, and very few te teams you can circle you say you're guaranteed going to win that one. It's a very, it's a very competitive schedule, um, and we've got enough individual athletes out here that we should be able to uh, to make some noise um, and, and see some guys really have some success this season. So, coach, you have new quarterback this year, Landon Edwards. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you start out uh, with one running back, but it looks like someone else is taking over the chores here. Do you have any comments on thoughts on, on that? You know, the worst part, or the best, you know, it depends on how you look at it. The best or the worst part about this season is that we have so many new guys that the way we look right now in week two and the way we look today in week three is going to be completely different than week six and seven. And that's what it's about for us and our coaches is figuring out what guys belong where, how can we put guys in a position to not only make us successful, to make them successful, and it's going to be a work in progress for a little while. We're going to have to keep experimenting around with that. Range Service Center is a professional automotive service center that aims to provide the highest level of customer satisfaction. Their team is dedicated to performing honest and ethical work. Their experienced technicians make affordably priced immediate and scheduled repairs. Plus, they offer 24-hour emergency roadside assistance and much more. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street, or call 502-222-1673. LaGrange Service Center. Founded in 1910 in the Ohio Valley region, German American Bank has been raising the standards in banking, insurance, investments, and wealth management for over a century. We're big enough to provide the conveniences of modern banking, yet small enough to care about the people and communities we serve. Because we believe that when a community thrives, its people prosper. Strengthening our community since 1910. German American Bank. Looking for sound, prudent financial advice? Did you know that one of the brightest and best financial advisors is in your own backyard? Robin Lawson of Financial Solutions Incorporated has a mission to understand your long-term goals and to create a specific strategy just for you. Robin understands the challenges that face most of us today and offers fresh, out-of-the-box thinking that can put you on the road to financial freedom. Contact Robin Lawson today at 502-225-9900. That's 502-225-9900 or visit LawsonFinancial.net. Welcome to WDRB Home Design here at Watts Home Center. Today we're talking lighting, specifically outdoor lighting with Maddie. What are some of the obstacles your clients face with outdoor lighting? Well, anybody can really come in here and just pick out a fixture for the way that it looks. However, the real obstacle comes in knowing how many to use, where the placement needs to be, and what type of fixture to use to really bring emphasis to those focal points outside their home. And the Watts team can help with this. Yes, of course. We actually have designers like myself and electricians on hand here so we can really help our customer from the start to finish of the whole design and installation process. Tell us about the range of light fixtures that you have here. Yeah, so here at Watts Home Center we carry various interior decorative fixtures, exterior fixtures, landscape fixtures, and commercial luminaires. We've really been able to help our customer find any type of fixture they're looking for. And that's WDRB Home Design here at Watts Home Center. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. 
It's the Amazon Prime equivalent, Joey, of Thursday Night Football. Tonight live in BucknerGlycott.com, the only game in town. And great to have you here for Fern Creek and Oldham County. Tonight's keys to the game presented by Watts Home Center and LaGrange Design. That feels like home. First for Fern Creek. Well, Fern Creek, we're going to talk about the keys to the game. Feeding time. And when I say feeding time, I'm talking about the two running backs they have. You know, they have a senior, Cameron Trice, who was their top returning back. He had about 259 yards, or about, he had 259 yards, four touchdowns last year, and they expected him to be the feature back. But it ended up being Michael Malone. And Michael Malone has, you know, he has led the way this year, and he's at 27 carries for 186 yards and four touchdowns this season. So, you know, that's they need to feed those guys. They give those guys the ball, control the line. Secondly is pressure. They need to put pressure on these young quarterbacks of Oldham County. You know, they both quarterbacks, well, they, one won't be playing now because of injury, but uh, at the time, both quarterbacks, they had no varsity time, basically no varsity time, so they put pressure on them. And defensive-wise, you know, Coach talked about it a little bit. Uh, last week they didn't tackle very well. He said they need to work on that, and if the defense can tackle tonight, then I think they can uh, they can be in line for a victory for themselves. And for the Colonels, there will be a new quarterback. Coach McBroom will talk about that in the next segment. Uh, but this team trying to string successive plays together. They'd have a good play last week, and, the, and then a penalty would take away a turnover, take away a touchdown, all growing pains within a young squad. Yes, growing up fast. These kids are going to have to learn. You know, they had, they had success last year. A lot of those seniors and Sam Young and the guys, and now they're gone, so it's their turn, and they're growing. They have to grow up fast and and, and just learn the ways you know that Coach McBroom wants it, wants it to be varsity wise, uh, health wise. You know, we just kind of mentioned it. You harped on it, Coach, or not harp, but you know, you mentioned it, Coach, that uh, that that you know, quarterback wise, there's it's going to be uh, it's 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 going to be number fourteen, Zach Davis. Now Zach is going to be in there at quarterback because of the loss of uh, of the other quarterback, and you've got to keep the other kids healthy, you know. And last is their confidence, you know, like you said. One play success, another another play penalty. They need to work on that confidence where they can have successive uh, positive plays, and, and that could be the key to their victory. And both these teams, this is a non-district game, but you get the sense that it's, it's really important because after this you've got an extra day, this game being a day earlier, so you've got eight days between this week and next week. Your season really can go in one of two directions. Right. These kids, they get an extra day of rest. They can go out tomorrow night, watch their friends, watch their foes, watch someone play football, which, you know, you normally never get to do that, you know, and an extra day of rest might help a few players, and it will be a three-day weekend, so a lot of a lot of guys will be enjoying themselves this weekend, but, you know, uh, as I did, <laughs> I don't know about many, on a three-day weekend with a loss, I really didn't enjoy myself. I kind of took the losses too hard, and, you know, some of these kids, you know, they may, they may not be happy this weekend uh, with a loss, but, you know, they will have the opportunity to get out and see other people, so... It, it, it's a it's a huge game for both teams. You got one team, like I said, uh, 500 team, at, and they're young, and they they got a victory in. You have another team, very young, 0 and 2, but you know we're out here at Oldham County, and anything can happen tonight. Tayshawn McBroom, very passionate in our conversation. We will hear from the Oldham County head coach next on Glycod.com. Car's been damaged. Regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Visit your locally owned power equipment dealer, Anderson Sales and Service in Madison, Crestwood, and our newest location at 1675 Watterson Trail in Louisville. For dependable, friendly heating, cooling, electric, and plumbing service, it's Kinzer & Kinzer at 200 East Jefferson Street in LaGrange. Locally owned and operated since 1983. Call 502-222-0497.
Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Colossians 3.23. Stinnett Plumbing. Proudly serving Oldham County with a complete array of services from faucet fixes to bathroom renovations. Locally owned, built on integrity, and committed to bringing exceptional quality work to you. On call 24 hours a day for emergency repairs. Phone 502-690-3070. Stinnett Plumbing. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. Tayshawn McBroom is here, head coach of the Colonels. Oldham looking for their first one of the year. They'll welcome in Fern Creek. Uh, Tayshawn, you guys did some good things last week in the yeah. loss at Shelby County. Your takeaways on that game? It was it was uh, it was rough, man. Just with all the penalties and all the negations, um, we had two fumbles. They got called back in the touchdown, taken off the board. So we're just gonna try to build on those pros, man, and just not wait till we're down 14 or 21 to start playing full speed. Your defense had some big plays that you referenced, yes. but how deflating is that when you get a touchdown called back? Uh, I think it took the air out of us, man. Every time we got something going, it just felt like we got negated by some type of penalty. Um, but this week, we're looking to play a cleaner game, play hard nose. I told my guys, don't tell me anything, show me everything. <laughs> so I just won't see them play extremely hard tonight. And uh, when the dust settles, hopefully we're there for, with a chance to win. Zach Davis now back at quarterback for a second start. What do you expect from him this go around? Uh, I expect the nerves to be down. Um, I expect him to play like a guy that has nothing to lose uh, and just be decisive when he, when he does throw the football. Make decisive decision, control the offense, protect the ball. Would you like to see more disparity in the run game? Maybe more of a balance there, perhaps? Yes, if we can get to that point. I, 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 need, I still think our line needs to protect a little better. Um, but I'm going to try to involve my running backs tonight and uh, get some one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. And we're going uh, to try to get us a win tonight, man. Fern Creek, one and one Tough loss to a very good team last week. Mm -hmm. What do you take from them? Um, hopefully, Johnson Sitchum still wore them down a little bit. Um, we're going to try to come out, hit them in the mouth early. Um, Fern Creek, since I've been around, has always been an athletic team mm -hmm. with some decent size. So, um, But we're going to try to play on them out undisciplined a little bit. There was a lot of offsides last week, a lot of poor snaps over the head. So we're going to just try to maintain, and hopefully they make mistakes before we do. A week shorter in prep, has that hindered anything at all, changed anything? Not for me, man. I think I actually rather took the game on Thursday. We had a chance to play <laughs> Saturday again. I said, let's play go short week. I won't give these guys extra time either. So we're going to come off. we both coming off a loss. Short week, man. So uh, may the best man win tonight. Thank you. Founded in 1910 in the Ohio Valley region, German American Bank has been raising the standards in banking, insurance, investments, and wealth management for over a century. We're big enough to provide the conveniences of modern banking, yet small enough to care about the people and communities we serve. Because we believe that when a community thrives, its people prosper. Strengthening our community since 1910. German American Bank. LaGrange Service Center is a professional automotive service center that aims to provide the highest level of customer satisfaction. Their team is dedicated to performing honest and ethical work. Their experienced technicians make affordably priced immediate and scheduled repairs. Plus, they offer 24-hour emergency roadside assistance and much more. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street or call 502-222-1673. LaGrange Service Center. Research has shown high school sports to be a great community influence. Join scores of local businesses that have partnered with Glycod in sponsoring live, hometown-oriented sports programming on our video and social media platforms. For more information, email info at glycod.com. For surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Leslie Gilly in Crestwood today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. 
more coverage of Oldham County High School's football when we come back. We'll also discuss why this game is being played on a Thursday. That and more when we return. If your car's been damaged, regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Visit your locally owned power equipment dealer, Anderson Sales and Service in Madison, Crestwood, and our newest location at 1675 Waterson Trail in Louisville. For dependable, friendly heating, cooling, electric, and plumbing service, it's Kinzer & Kinzer at 200 East Jefferson Street in LaGrange. Locally owned and operated since 1983. Call 502-222-0497. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Colossians 3.23, Stinnett Plumbing, proudly serving Oldham County with a complete array of services from faucet fixes to bathroom renovations. Locally owned, built on integrity, and committed to bringing exceptional quality work to you. On call 24 hours a day for emergency repairs. Phone 502-690-3070, Stinnett Plumbing. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. Back to Buckner on a toasty Thursday evening. Chris Labar back with uh, Joey Hamilton and Mike Sumner shooting high in the sky in what is uh, humidity of about 95%, it appears. This game on a Thursday for a compelling reason. Well, it's here on a Thursday Official shortage. Oh, I, I thought you knew I, that. I, I, I did not know. You know, yeah. I, I, honestly, I did not know. I was, I was the one. That's funny you said that. I did not know, but I was like, this is great. Thursday night football. I love Thursday night football. I think Thursday night football is great. I think you should every every player should at least do it once once a season. You know, it, because you know it's a it's like a short week. It's kind of the it's the version of the NFL Thursday night game. You know, you, everyone should should enjoy it. You know, because. The next day you get to come to school. If you're victorious now, <laughs> if you're victorious, you come to school the next day and everybody's patting your back, telling you a great job you've done. Then on the flip side, I've been on that side too where we did uh, we did lose a game and, and we did have to come back to school that day and everyone's telling you, you know, they're, they're just – they're not saying there's anything to you. They're just giving you the stank eye. So, but, uh, no, Thursday night games are great just because you're done. As I said earlier, you're done with the week. You, Friday night you get to go watch someone, you get to go watch a game. And, you know, the ironic part, <laughs> which I, I was laughing at myself, was that both of these head coaches, uh, Coach Abel. We'll take a okay. break. Be right yep. back. Welcome to WDRB Home Design here at Watts Home Center. Today we're talking ways to give your home a facelift. Jim, what are some updates and trends for doors this season? The most popular door of the year so far has been this three-quarter six light shown here as a double French door. I've sold this in this configuration, a door with side lights, a single door. People are loving the natural light this year. In addition to doors, windows are another great way to update your home, right? Absolutely. There's no better way to increase your home's energy efficiency than new windows and if you're about to sell your house nothing looks better on a property listing than new windows so can you and your team provide me an estimate to match my particular budget absolutely with multiple products and vendors we can work with your budget to get your home the product it needs the Watts Home Center team can answer all of your window and door questions so come on out and see them here in LaGrange or go to wattshomecenter.com to learn more 
If your car's been damaged, regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. From Glycod, it's Roy's Body Shop Oldham County High School's football. Roy's Body Shop in LaGrange, collision repair for the people. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Anderson Sales and Service in Crestwood, making your life easier with quality products and quality service. Watts Home Center, design that feels like home. Thompson Heating and Cooling, making people comfortable. LaGrange Service Center, quality car care since 1964. State Farm Insurance Agent Leslie Gilley, and by Mortensen Family Dental. Now, to the field for all the action from Glycod on Roy's Body Shop, Oldham County High School's football. It sure is great to have you back to live high school football week three on Glycod.com. Three minutes north of a kickoff between Fern Creek and Oldham County. 6A football non-district game. I'm Chris Labar along with Joey Hamilton. But back to your point about Thursday night football with JCPS. They've done it for years with the St. James Festival. They'll play on that Thursday, so Fern Creek gets two of those this year. Correct, correct. Uh, honestly, I was going to say, if you all know Chris Labar like I do, I thought he just said, hey, it's a long weekend coming up. We're going to play on Thursday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, no, seriously, it, it is a, it's a fun deal, and everyone should do it. And uh, and I, I was my, – my point to the two coaches was I was just saying Tigers. it's very interesting. Both of these Number two guys two, grew up Edwards. not too far away from each other. Ten, uh, Coach Benson Tayshawn Davis. McBroom playing at the High View Little Number League. I mean, Heights Point Andrew Little Johnson. League, I'm sorry. And Coach Abel Number playing seven, at the four, High View Little two, League in the one-year part. And I think they played against each other. They don't know it. I was talking to both of them earlier. And they were telling me about that, and I'm and I put two and two together, and they played against each other, and both of their dads were coaches too, so that that's a, that's a that's a point there. But I I, I thought that was very interesting. It's like both their dads coached, and uh, Josh is at at Highview, uh, uh, Tayshawn's dad's at Hikes Point, and they played each other. I think it's it's called a. It's a little bowl game they used to have at an Old Cardinal Stadium. So that was very interesting tonight. You get There's the sense there is a mutual respect amongst these two programs. Oh, yeah. They, both these guys, uh, you know, they both come from winning programs. Josh played at Manuel High School, and they were there, you know, eight, nine, t nine wins each year. Tayshawn played at Trinity High School. He's won two state championships. Then both have, you know, went on to college. And, and Coach Abel, he played at Kentucky Wesleyan. He was an academic All-American. And uh, Coach McBroom went on to Georgetown, and they were very successful at Georgetown. And then, you know, what do you, what do you think, 10, 12 years later, both these guys are, are into coaching, one year apart, and they're, they're, they're matching up against each other on a Thursday night. There you see a look at the series. Colonels having won the last two. Fern Creek leading uh, at least since 01. They've won seven of the 12 matchups. Coin toss right now occurring at the 50. Tonight's quintet of officials highlighted by a great crew. They'll work double duty again, a shortage of officials right now in all high school athletics. Alan Gray leading the quintet, so these guys will have double duty this week. And the only game in town literally tonight in the Louisville area for high school football. OC looks like they are going to wait till the second half to make their decision. So it will probably be Fern Creek's football here. So Fern Creek will open with possession momentarily. Colonels will kick it. The opening kickoff from the Colonels. Great to hear Mike Schatzer, former Oldham County High School football coach voice. He's now the new PA announcer that uh, profession suits him just fine. One of the nicer guys that we'll run across throughout this year. 
In a big game for both these teams, Fern Creek always big, always athletic, and the Colonels a uh, youthful group, but getting better week by week. Yeah, they're a young group. You know, they lost a lot last year. You know, those guys, uh, they lost 20 seniors to graduation, you know, so it'll be full of fresh faces, you know, for Coach Broom in his second year here. So, like I said, you've got uh, you've got Sam, you've got Sam Young replacing, uh, I'm sorry, Sam Young being replaced by Zach Davis. But he does have two guys there. He has Grant Gilchrist, a running back, and he also has uh, Elkins. You know, so uh, those two guys, they'll be back. Elkins is a receiver, Grant Gilchrist a running back. Uh, Gilchrist had 141 yards last year with three TDs, so they have a little, they have a little bit of experience back, but it's still uh, overall a very youthful group. Caden Shepard, another reliable colonel, and uh, only his junior year. He'll go both ways. You'll see him a lot. He's uh, one, He'll pass the eye test about 244. He'll play above the ball at nose. He'll also get some tight carries and short confined yardage situations as well. So Fern Creek football momentarily. Tigers 1-1, one one, Oldham 0-2. Oh yeah, uh, Fern Creek, they've got, they've got Land Landon Edwards. You know, he's done a pretty good job thus far. You know, he's... He's not throwing it very well at 38%, but uh, they do have one win. So, and I think his best his best pass slash handoff would be to Michael Malone. You know, Malone the first week against J Town. You know, he had a six six carries for 113 yards, so and three touchdowns. So, you know, that's that's a pretty good uh, that's a pretty good combo right there. Just give it to him and let him do his work. Cam tries Will Young back. To return, they are parallel with one another at the 15th, the far left of your screen. And Oldham will send on a new kicker, fresh from the soccer team, his uh, maiden voyage, if you will, Hami Barrero. Now that that's a that's a good that's a good thing to do. Uh, you know, when I played, we always got a soccer player. You know, always got. Someone of the soccer team to come kicking Friday nights, and I, I think it was a thrill. It was a thrill of those guys' life. I think they really loved it. They could tell everybody, "Hey, I do play. I do play football." You know, Young will run under it, and Will Young uh, ripping yardage across the 30. Now he's brought down just shy up to the 28-yard line. Very nice runs. Looks like they set up a little middle wall return. I'm sorry, middle middle return there. Kind of leap leapfrogged over one person. Nice return there by number 14, Will Young. Fern Creek offensive line includes four juniors, Cherry and Haverly on the left side. The center is Noah Blackman. The lone senior, right guard James Malone and Alex Wilson. Right tackle quarterback, 5'7", 162-pound junior, Landon Edwards, Michael Malone, the featured running back. And there you see him, that big number bruiser, number 21, as Edwards will open in a shotgun. And Malone ripping yardage, and he's going to be twisting and turning. Bumble, that ball bumble, popped bumble. out, and that ball is recovered by Caden Osborne. Caden Osborne apparently fell on it. Yes, looks like he and did. And Fern Creek oh, will get it, it back. Bumble. Malone oh. able to lasso it back to preserve the possession. It looked like Malone and Josh Souter. Souter. Looks like those two had the ball right there. They were right there next to it, and I thought Malone dived on I mean, I'm sorry. I thought uh, number 23, Caden uh, Osborne, had the ball right there. That would have been a big, big-time break for this young defense. So a first down advancement for Malone. Now close to 200 rush yards on the year with four touchdowns, and Fern Creek will recycle the downs. First down and 10, Malone up the gut again. He'll pick up about three. It's like a battering ram in there. You know, I'd just give him the ball, give him the ball, give him the ball. Looks like. Michael Malone. Oldham County's playing a wide tackle six. Looks like a six-man front there with two linebackers. It looks like they're preparing for the run. They're putting about eight in the box right there. So, I don't – doesn't look like they expect Fern Creek to throw the ball too much. LaShawn Nolan also will get carries in the backfield. He'll wear number seven. He's stationed to the left of Edwards, who's in the gun. And at the top of your screen, their leading receiver, Kinsley Davis. Here is an end around. And across the 50, scampers Trice, and Trice slung down at the 40-yard line and a first down. It's a nice run there by Trice. You know, Trice was really expected to be, be the main guy this year. He was their top returning back. He had four touchdowns last year, ran for about 250 yards, and he was expected to be the main guy. And as in football, we talk about, you know, every year is different. So uh, even though he's expected to be the main guy, this Michael Malone is, is taking over, but he's still no shabby back. 
Grant Turner. Check that David Turner with a stop. Up now to the Oldham 39-yard line. So three straight carries for this Fern Creek Tiger offense. Looks like a lot of new fresh faces out there in the Oldham County defense. This is a group minus three on turnovers this year. They'll have to capture a few. And Fern Creek's going to call a quick timeout. So we'll take a quick 30-second timeout. Fern Creek, football when we come back. A lot goes into taking care of your property. You need equipment with more durability, versatility, and number one rated reliability built in. Like Kubota compact tractors that can do it all right, Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut, and the Sidekick utility vehicle built for hard work and fun at 40 miles per hour. Kubota equipment lives up to the highest standards. Yours. Visit your local dealer today. You're watching Oldham County High School's football from Glacod. First and 10, Fern Creek from the Oldham County 39-yard line. Fourth play on this drive. Tigers fumbled, snap one. They recover. Now they're marching down inside the Oldham 40. Oldham County needs to make a big play right here. Defense. Got eight in the box there. Hothran in motion, and here's a short side rush across the 36 to the 35. It's Edwards. He'll take it for about four. He's another new guy in there, quarterback Edwards for Fern Creek. The Oldham County defense, that first game, they gave up 186 yards rushing, almost 200 yards passing. And, you know, Coach, Coach McBroom talked about how the second week they got much better, and then they just had a couple plays that, that were positive for them, but it ended up being called back. Ramari Taylor on an island right above the graphic. Wearing number four, he'll have it right at the 30. And here's an end around this time. Far side, Trice. Trice trying to bounce it outside, and he'll be slung to the ground. Involved in the tackle was Miller Brown. That was a nice play as well by Wade Melting. Is it Met it's Metling? It could be Melting or Metling, but Wade made a nice play right there. Nice play setting it down. Big third down play here for the Oldham County defense. Yeah, it sure is. That's Wade Metling coming up from the linebacker spot to force third down and long. Perhaps four down territory for the Tigers as we slide under nine minutes in this first stanza. Edwards in a gun. And Trice with a little razzle-dazzle trying to cut back to the near side of the field, seeking a block, and thrown to the ground back to the Oldham 49-yard line. That play was all set up by Medlin right there. He tried to get outside, and Medlin sealed it off, and he tried to reverse his field, the ball carrier did. And then uh, Fred Scarborough came through and just grabbed him and slung him to the ground. That's a great play by the defense of Oldham County. Loss of about six on that play, so fourth down. Number 27, Patrick Carr to do the About 15 for officially. Tigers. Back deep, number three, Miller Brown. Carr on to punt. As Miller Brown awaiting the Oldham kick, or rather the Fern Creek kick. And Brown in congestion will Good fair job. catch it. Good the job. The 18 yard line. I love that. Miller Brown coming up, making a fair catch right there in traffic. That's what you got to do. You know, we, we talked about that last week uh, at a couple of the games, the two previous weeks. Uh, talked about the Turners having to catch that ball. You know, you don't catch it, you give up 10, 15, 20 yards there. So that's a great job there by Miller Brown handling that ball in traffic. Net punt of 29 yards. The Oldham offense left to right. Music, Scarborough, Bergen, McGill. And big Sheldon Hancock at right tackle. Quarterback in his second start is Zach Davis. Grant Gilchrist, the feature colonel back. And two receivers flanked each side. And here is Gilchrist, and Gilchrist stood up. Gain of about a yard. Ramari Taylor from the safety spot with a tackle. They got there quick. It looked like an opening right there for Gilchrist, and then that hole closed very quick. A couple of Fern Creek defenders got there. Now 
Gilchrist a rushing score last week, also a two-point conversion in week one, so he has made himself known through this Oldham County rushing attack. Now Oldham will go empty on second and long. Here is Gilchrist from Davis. And moderate yardage again, third down and long. Antoine Denson right there on the play. He's been on the last two plays. A linebacker, a junior, right there in the middle, number 52. A little quickness there to the ball. You know, Gilchrist, he, uh, he scored a touchdown run last week and had a two-point play. Then the week before that, the first week, or I'm sorry, the first week he had a touchdown and a two-point run. Then last week he had a 14-yard touchdown run in Shelby County. So he's been, uh, he's been the bulk of the offense there. One receiver out far, one of the near on third down along Davis. He's going to sling it across, and incomplete driving was Romari Taylor, and it will be fourth down along. I think that's one of the things Coach McGroom talked about. Drop back and worked on your confidence there. He kind of didn't give his receiver a chance and kind of just threw it right before his receiver could make his cut. He's got to give him an opportunity there. But like I said, they're a work in progress, and uh, I'm sure that Coach McGroom will keep working with him on that. William Young back to return for Fern Creek. Colonels will send on bruising senior Widden McCraney to punt, and this one blocked, gobbled up, and Fern Creek in for a punt block touchdown. Touchdown, Tigers. That's a double duty right there. That's that's a, that I would call a double play. Number three right there. Uh, Cam Trice goes in, blocks the kick, then picks it up and scores. So the Tigers block the McCraney punt, gobbled up by Trice and Fern Creek with the game's first score. That's one thing Coach McBroom didn't want to happen early. Defense did actually a really good job last series, too. And that's just one thing on the special teams. You know, the defense is doing well, offense not. Got to have all three phases going in the right direction, and that's going to hurt the Colonels right here, but they should get the ball right back. Maybe Gilchrist and uh, Gilchrist and Zach Davis can do something about that when they get the ball back. Andrew Beck, he's a perfect 10 of 10 on extra points this year. That kick is right down Broadway, Fern Creek on top, 7 nothing. Be right back. Glycod.com. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glacod. Tigers lead, 7-zip, Cam Trice with a punt block, and now the Colonels try to respond. You know, it's one of those things, Oldham Back County, I know they don't like to talk too much about it, but they did lose uh, two really good football players to, a, to a, a, I guess, what we call a transfer. And they've, yeah. they've, they've transferred to a Christian Academy. And, uh, you know, it's the uh, Ruffin kid. Uh, I think his name is uh, Justin Ruffin and Trey Cotton. And I watched them the first week, and those two really, two really talented players. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that was, a, that was another big hurt for Oldham County. Well, watching McCraney punt last week versus Shelby, he was uh, slow Kellen Barnes, whom I worked with last week, said, boy, he likes to tee it up, and it would take him a little while to get it, get it off his foot. And certainly that was appearing on that last block. He took the extra step. You know, you like to – Punters to catch it in one step, boom, he took the extra step. So the Colonels try to bring it deep as that is Gilchrist. And Gilchrist across the 35, nice return for Oldham. Real nice return by Gilchrist. Line drive kick, kind of filled it really quick. And then uh, I think they had maybe a middle return there, but he kind of more of a right middle return. He just kind of weaved his way up in there. It's a good field position. They're up past the 30. So what do the Colonels do here on what could be a very important drive? Well, it looks like I'd give it to Gilchrist. Now they do, you know, they do have a receiver out there who had a, who had a touchdown catch last. That's Mason Sidoris, but and he had a 50, 56 yard touchdown catch last week. So we'll see. But I think it's all about Gilchrist. Here's an end around, looking for a block on the near side, and that is. Osborne, and Osborne close to the sticks. He'll take it to him at the 43-yard line, a couple yards short. Another young guy in there getting some time, Caden Osborne, a junior. 
That was a nice little setup right there. They went to what we call a, I guess you can call an invert look of a wishbone. So instead of being the, f the full back being up, he was back. And so they hand it to the gentleman on the right, and he just goes left with two lead blockers. Nice little gain there, nine yards. That's a nice play. That Fern Creek interior solid with Johnson and Marshall both north of three bills Woo. and an inside handoff again, and that's going to be an Oldham first down. Looks like Caden Shepard there. Is that the big guy right there, Caden Shepard? It's about 5'11", 240 right there. That's what you would call a true bull truck offense right there. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to him for one yard or two, and, and he got the first down for him. That's Shepard's specialty in those short yardage situations. Started many games last year as the featured running back for Oldham. Colonel's first first down of the proceedings. They'll have it first and 10 from their 47. Trying to respond after a punt block score. Here is Gilchrist, and Gilchrist paving away across the 45. He'll be close to the stick as Oldham strings out a nice run. That's a very nice run. It looked like more of a power I set out of a, out of a pistol. And so, uh, and then they overload the side there. So they had Fern Creek outmatched it over there, and everyone just came down. And two, two blockers went out there and made a block. And they say, you know, Gilchrist makes a nice cut, and you've got nine yards again. So Oldham winning first down on the last couple of advances, and they'll have it second down and one from the Fern Creek 44 yard line. You got Gilchrist, and I'm sorry, you got Cameron Shepard in there. What they call it? Davis in a gun. And an Oldham first down with okay. forward progress to the Fern Creek 41 as Gilchrist takes it again. Nice play there by Gilchrist. I thought maybe they might give it to Cam Shepard again. Get a little bull truck offense at one yard, but this time he was a lead blocker on that and kind of made a hole there for the running back. So it's, either way, he's doing his job. That was one of the keys Coach McBroom discussed in the pregame. He felt like his offense could run the ball a little bit, wanted more from his offensive line, and thus far they've delivered. And that's what Coach uh, Coach Abel talked about, how they did not tackle last week. And that's the one thing he wanted to work on, and looks like Oldham County is taking advantage of that right now. Jackson Elkins split out high and wide, and this ball nearly hits the turf. Timing, timing, timing. The uh, quarterback, uh, I don't know if it's him or the center. I can't really say, but the snap wasn't that great. And so uh, instead of him having the timing work, it pitched out to Gilchrist. And have, and have a nice play there. It, it just took a little too long. The next thing you know, number five, uh, JV, JV on Fisher, he was uh, he was in there just like that. So you lose, what, five yards, and next thing you know, you put yourself in the hole. That was a near catastrophe as Gilchrist fortunate to hang on to that. Second down and long. Colonel's behind the sticks in a design run, perhaps, as Davis tries to get those yardage back, and he'll be close to the initial line of scrimmage. A little half fake there to Cam Shepard. Didn't let Cam be the lead blocker on that one. Uh, didn't get too much on that. They seemed like they had more success in between the tackles instead of outside the tackles. It was Caden Shepard there involved. So third down and about 10 for Oldham. Perhaps four down territories. They'll have it at the Fern Creek 43-yard line. And Elkins split out high. And Sidoris at the bottom of your screen covered up in that Oldham graphic. Davis in a gun. He's going to sling it for Elkins. And Elkins oh. nearly came out of the pile with it. It's incomplete. That was almost a great catch there by Elkins. He was double teamed there. And even though he had two people on him, he still almost came with the catch. The coverage by – there's a nice coverage there by uh, – Oh, we don't have him in there, number 26. <laughs> I was looking for his name. I did not see him, but it is also out there like with uh, Dwayne Langford. Dwayne Langford is out there Let's helping out, but we do not have number 26. I apologize, but it was nice coverage there, but Elkins uh, almost did come up with that catch. Big play call here for the Colonels, fourth down and 10. Do you quick kick here, or do you go for it? I don't know. Davis in a shotgun. He needs 10. Will he get it? Davis lunging for the stick in a gutsy run for a first down. That's a special play there by Davis. That's what he does best, I, I suppose. That's, that's what I've seen so far. You know, that's a nice run. Had a little pressure on him, then just went up the middle and makes a very, very nice, nice run for the first down. Two cuts and first down. Good Davis play. needed 10, picked up 12. Sticks move to the Fern Creek 31-yard line, and already you see some hands on hips. 
remember on that, that Tiger interior. Remember that play, uh, Coach? Uh, 224, Chris. 224. Remember that play. Big, big play early in this game. Shepard up the gut. Caden Shepard bulldozing his way for a chunk of eight. I love that play. Just give it to the big guy. Let him go. If, if you had to give that play a name, I'd just say I'd call it the, the Caden special or the Shepard special. Let's just j get down and say Shepard special. Everyone knows you're going to do a lot. Knows you're going to up. Just go right up the gut. I love that play. Shepard delivering. The hit there as he'll take it for eight, and Oldham this time ahead of the sticks after uh, two very nice runs. This drive began inside the Oldham County 20 after a Miller-Brown fair catch. Shepard special. This time he will be denied, and then powers forward. We'll see where they mark it as they did not blow that whistle. That was a strong second effort there by him. He looked like he was down, looked like he's behind the line there. Looked like number 55 there, uh, Darius Marshall, and the rest of the guys had a play. Next thing you know, second effort there by, by Mr. Shepard. Next thing you know, as they say, first down, Colonels. Alan Gray, the official, he just eyeballed it. Didn't, didn't want the marker. Didn't, didn't want the it. chain crew. <laughs> he saw it all the way. <laughs> first down, Colonels. I love it. From the fringe of the Tiger red zone. Gilchrist, foot in the ground. He'll bounce it out with a spring, and he's close to a first down as he sashayed out of bounds. Nice play right there. They faked it to the big man right there, Shepard, and gave it to the second back, Gilchrist. Gilchrist bounces inside, then bounces outside. And Looks like another Colonel's first down. And if you didn't hear it, I'm going to tell you, Colonel's first down. There you go. Nice play there by Gilchrist. Good job. Good run. Good blocking there by his line. Got to love this drive. Everything on the ground as Oldham will have it from the, the Fern Colonels. Creek 10. First down and goal. It looks like what, that's what their positive is right now. Here is Gilchrist again. He'll twist and turn for a couple. And you know, things like that, when, when you're right here like this, second down, this is where you, you run it, you run it, you run it. You've got all of Fern Creek's defense in there tight because the last oh, play they were in there super tight. Do a little play action and hit your tight end out there in the corner. Let him block, 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 then fade to the corner and he should be wide open. And another thing, Fern Creek's got that sun in their eyes. They probably can't see what's coming. That's a great point. The sun glaring as we're still in high visibility here. Second down and goal. Davis directs traffic. Gilchrist tries to bounce it out again, and this time he'll be strung out back to the nine-yard line. He'll lose a couple. Darius Woodford with a nice tackle. Yeah, Travis Morton right there. He's the one that kind of held him up right there, but he made a nice play and got around him, but once he got around him, slowed him just enough for, for Travis to make that, for Darius to make that play. Third down and goal when we come. Range Service Center is a professional automotive service center that aims to provide the highest level of customer satisfaction. Their team is dedicated to performing honest and ethical work. Their experienced technicians make affordably priced immediate and scheduled repairs. Plus, they offer 24-hour emergency roadside assistance and much more. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street or call 502-222-1673. LaGrange Service Center. For dependable, friendly heating, cooling, electric, and plumbing service, it's Kinzer & Kinzer at 200 East Jefferson Street in LaGrange. Locally owned and operated since 1983. Call 502-222-0497. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glacod. Third down and goal for the Colonels as we welcome you back. Fern Creek with a punt block for a touchdown. Cameron Trice right, doing the honors as the Colonels as with a big, down big third down and goal. For OC, uh, third down and goal. Uh, second down is more time you want to play action and maybe throw it. And if they throw it this time on third down, uh, most defense are expecting it. But they're more of a passing set this time, too. Caden Shepard flanked to the left of quarterback Zach Davis. Davis slings it in the end zone and an nice Oldham play. County Davis touchdown. Woo! Line up there at tight end. Back, that is Zach Holman, his first game of the year. And the Colonel's on the board. That was a nice play. He just... 
Dropped straight back. Holman went straight down the middle. Next thing you know, it just hit him over, over, the, uh, over the middle. Touchdown right there. I was thinking that Fern Creek was expecting the pass, but I think Holman got a little too excited and threw the ball up, so they got a little flag, but it, touchdown's already in, so they made. Unsportsmanlike conduct called against the Colonels. So the Colonels, the score will hold, but a 15-yard unsportsmanlike in an untimely sequence. So now Oldham with a very distant point after. They're going to send on their newbie kicker, Hami Barrero, fresh off. An appearance from the soccer team. I believe Fern Creek, I don't know if you get the option. I think they'll take the penalty here instead of the kickoff. I don't know. They'll, they'll probably take it on the kickoff. Let them. And they are they're going to take the penalty here. I've seen some coaches that would like to take the penalty on the kickoff, which give them a little better field position on the kickoff. Looks like they're going to enforce uh, the penalty on the PAT attempt. The 15-yard penalty. So this they kick is going to be, in essence, for the Colonels, about a 35-yard extra point, perhaps a little less, maybe about 33-yard extra point. I didn't think Hami probably didn't think he's going to kick any 33-yarders when he got No, I bet he didn't either. But how about Zach Holm in his first game of the year? He's a very accomplished player. Five catches last year for 64 yards. Had an outstanding freshman year now in his junior season. And if he stays healthy, he is clearly a primary Oldham receiving threat. He's one of our keys to the game there. We can get some of these young men and keep them healthy. They can stay healthy. And, and next thing you know, they score a touchdown. You know, keep them around. That, that's, that's huge for them. Huge to keep those players healthy. Mason Sidoris will hold as... Barrero's had a shot to think about it, and this kick oh, is going to be off to the left. Had the distance there, just a little bit to the left right there, but had the distance, so, hey, keep that in mind. The big play on that series, though, was that, that quarterback run there, you know, on third and 11, where Zach Davis went back, looks to his right, can't find anybody, scrambles up, darts to the left, and darts back to the right, dives for that first down marker. That was the key. Key play right there. Grant Gilchrist doing some work on the ground. Caden Shepard with a couple of nice runs. But, yeah, you're right. That run by Davis on fourth down key in that Colonel drive. And, and keep in mind, Jami Guerrero right there with the distance on a 33-yarder, that could easily be a weapon down here later in the game. He showed he has the distance. And just, you know, actually just a little bit to the left, so – this probably, you know, had a little jitters his first kick. He's probably uh, probably better the second time around. Do you get the, the sense the margin of error, uh, or error rather, not uh, too good for either of these teams? Should be a tight, close ball game. Yes. Got a nice battle right here, 7-6. The Oldham County defense did a heck of a job last time. Nice kick there. Some depth in the air, and that ball caught inside the 10 for Fern Creek. And the Tigers to the near side of the field. That is going to be Woodyard. And Woodyard slung down at the Oldham 48-yard line. It's a nice play there by Caden Osborne saving. It's like a touchdown saving tackle right there. But so that was a nice middle wedge return. It went up right up the middle. And on one hand, it was a great kick, but I think it may have been too good of a kick. It gave the, gave the, return, ten, the return team time to set up their little wall or their little wedge there. The next thing you know, they just just pushed everyone out, and it was a nice return there at number 26. Let's see what this Fern Creek offense can do with outstanding field position. They'll have it at the Oldham 48-yard line. First play of this drive, Landon Edwards in the shotgun. Puts it in the belly of Malone, and Malone going to lose a yard. Good job there. Good defensive stop there by number 55, by Wade Mel Metting. Metling. That was a nice job. Both guards pulled on that. You know, I Nobody thought there was going to be a nice play, but Metling just came right, right behind. And, you know, that, that's a good sign of a good defensive player. When, when that guard or tackle pulls, you get right in their hip pocket and get right behind them. You make the play, and that's what he did. And next thing you know, you got second and ten. Dalen Hall, Jack Siderwicks, the inside duo for the Colonels. 
Loss of a yard on the menu for Fern Creek. And Edwards going to sling it on a slant. Taylor fighting off tacklers. He'll be slung down at the Oldham 44, third down and eight, looming. Nice catch there. Nice catch there by, by Taylor. He, like, he didn't turn up. He kind of went back. I think he lost about three or four yards. And next thing you know, Luke Shaz Shatzer comes in and makes a play. So instead of being third and two, it's third and eight. You got to turn, catch that ball and just turn and get upfield as much as you can. Spurn Creek offense has uh, sputtered at times. Again, their lone score punt block. Cameron Trice. And rolling to the strong side is Edwards. And a, well, I was going to say great catch, but a drop by Kinsley Davis, and it's fourth down. Uh, nice setup there. The quarterback rolls out right. Receiver runs down, gets past the stick, turns around. But I think the sun had something to do with that because that sun, when you turn around, it is right in your eyes right there. It looked like it was going to be a great catch. And a great throw on the run oh, yes, it was from Edwards. Right on the numbers. Right on the numbers. That, was, that was a dime. They put it right there. So Andrew Beck will fasten the headgear. That means he's going to trot on to punt for the Tigers. Or at least that's the indicator from Coach Josh Abel. Got Miller Brown back there. Getting ready to catch one. He's at 10-yard line, 10-yard line roll. For those who don't know, just if it goes over head of 10 yards, you let it roll into the end zone. He's got to continue with that sun right now, too. And Beck will try to steer it. That is a low belt buckle high kick, and Brown will watch it be scooped up at the 12. Oldham County caught a break in that punt. That was a low line drive there and short. Kicks it high in the air, and that sun, that could be possibly a, a you know, just a tough catch there for the, for the returner, but that, they caught a break there. Last time this offense on the field, they took it right down the field and put six points up. It's been a great ball game thus far. Great to have you here on Glycod.com. Thursday night, high school football. Chris Labar, Joey Hamilton, Mike Sumner shooting the great footage high above our press box here. There's the night flights. I'm loving it. I'm loving this. And it's, it's, it feels great out here, too. It, it's, it, you know, it's not too, too hot. You're probably not going to get too many players catching a cramp out here it's, until the season is changing. Oldham County timeout. Be right back on Glycon. Or surprisingly great rates, contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Leslie Gilly in Crestwood today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're watching Oldham County High School's football from Glacod. See what the Colonels can muster here post timeout. First down and 10. First play of this drive from the Colonel 12. Gilchrist, the lone back behind Davis. And a little flip to Grant. And he's got some speed and he'll spring outside for a few. Well, that time it was, it was a good. Good timing on that. As you can see, the quarterback got a nice snap there. And he just pitched it right out to Gilchrist. And next thing you know, Gilchrist gets uh, five, six, seven, eight yards right there. Uh, last time when it was no timing on there, it took him a few minutes to get out there. Next thing you know, number five got out there. Uh, Caleb, I'm sorry, uh, Javon uh, Fleck Fisher and comes up and makes a play. So the timing it makes all the difference in the world. Elkins now will trot. Outside of your picture, he's the lone target. Great job, Mike. He's at the bottom of your picture. The lanky Colonel Senior is Davis now. Oh. Will bobble that snap and fortuitously Gilchrist there to gobble it up back at the 15 yard line and it's gonna be a loss of a couple. I know Coach McBroom is fuming, fuming in that visor. That, that is one of those things he talked about. He talked about have a positive play, then you have a negative play and a positive play and he wants more consecutive positive plays. Well, Joey, you know this. You can call the best play in the world, but if 
the ball security there from the center to the quarterback isn't intact, it doesn't it, matter, does it? It doesn't matter one <laughs> bit. You know, it, you, could, you can be the best X and O guy out there next thing you know, but if your center can't get it to the quarterback, then you've got no execution. See what the Colonels draw up here on third down and long. They'll have to advance it in a oh. poor, poor snap. Push it and out. Davis push it out. Push will it out. usher it out for a safety. Smart the play there by Davis there. Uh, I, I, it looked like it was a little bit over his head there. I don't think he had an opportunity to get that, but he made the smart play by pushing that out of the end zone. I've seen sometimes where young men might pick it up and think they can make a play there and, and give the other team six. So that was a smart play the there by Davis the, of, of you know, the best the of the worst situation there. So they will be kicking off from the 20, Oldham County will, and it's still 9-6. You know, they got opportunity here. A defense will get back out here, and maybe they can make a play for him. Tayshawn McGroom working the Colonel's sideline as he'll gather up his specialist for the free kick. You know, in that first quarter, you know, Oldham County, they had, they had 56 yards of offense. You know, it was a real positive there. You know, so the offense was moving the ball. They did move the ball really well. You know, it's it's been the special teams that's where they've been hurt the most tonight. You know, a block kick and then, well, I don't want to call that a special team play, but that it was it is a shotgun snap, so now perhaps that's a better scenario than having to punt on fourth down from your end zone. Yeah. It could be the same result. The two the two points was a smart move. The two points is smart because you really don't want to do that because you've had some issues already with that. And last time Guerrero kicked a nice kick, but I think he may have kicked it too high and gave the return team time to set up a nice mid now there's a better one. Barrero booms that go. ball. There oh, mine. It's going nice to roll one. all the way down to the 21-yard line. And here comes Fern Creek up the hill, trying to bounce it outside, a flag thrown. And Good finally, job. the Tigers slung to the turf inside the 25. Great job there by Oldham County right there. Number 20. Number, number 24 out there. Uh, Makai Bake Blanking makes a nice play out there. And Three officials will sort out that flag, perhaps on the tackle. <laughs> oh, that's the kicker. That's 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 Guerrero, Guerrero's right there in the thick of it. Guerrero's trying to get. I was looking for his number Bar there. Barrero <laughs> with a B. Oh, Barrero. Tommy Barrero. Barrero. Yes. Barrero. I, okay, he was in there in the thick of it trying to make a tackle that play. I was looking for his number there, and I was like, oh yeah, I've got it down here because he wasn't in the initial program. Barrero's in there trying to make a tackle. I was like, that was a nice play by him himself. Well, and he's had a role in this game. Oh yes, yes. From the extended point after, now a free kick, and Barrero again, fresh off the uh, soccer squad, his first career game as an Oldham County football player. He has uh, had a role here he's in the first career, quarter he's plus. He's a tackle now, too. He's, he's, in the, he's in the book. He's in the book as a tackle. So I believe, I believe it was a block in the back, but I'm not sure. You know, usually that's what you have in this scenario, but I'm not quite sure what they called. Josh Abel there at the top of your screen, receiving instruction and explanation. Coach McGroom doesn't look to be uh, too happy out there they're doing he's walking out there trying to see what's happening here and Alan Gray the lead official tonight and there's always the, the question not only on identifying the team but the ball placement as well seems that's always an important factor in often lends to delays at times where the new line of scrimmage will be So, again, Oldham County with a free kick from Barrero after the safety. It was a booming kick from Barrero. The Fern Creek returner elected to watch it roll all the way inside the 20, then scooped it up, and then two flags thrown as he was slung to the ground. That was a really, really good kick. A lot better. A lot better than the previous one. That, you know, that kick from the 40, that's definitely going into the end zone. It's going to be Fern Creek football. They're going to mark it up. Looks like inside. A 30. Are re kicking it? That's what it appears to be. So they will. Tayshawn McBroom, you can't see him at the bottom of your screen, but he is not very content. 
holding against Fern Creek. Line, and then he got personal foul, face mask against, so the penalty's offset. There you go. Looks like we're going to re-kick here. A series of so the Colonels will kick it again. Again, the prior free kick occurred kick at the 20. So it looks like uh, it just, it never happened. You know, holding against Fern Creek, face mask against Oldham County, that never happened. So we'll just do it all over again. Now hopefully he can get another great kick like that. That was a really good kick. Langford and Holden back for Fern Creek. As Barrero winding it up again in those teal sneaks, and he'll pound it this time in the middle and scooped up by Holden at the 30. Good job. Good job there. Good job by the, by the coverage team. That was a real good job there. Number so in all that scrum, down, the Tigers only four, picked up about eight yards in field position. That came out better, almost almost better for Oldham, Oldham County right there. David Brand Turner, a nice coverage the there. The that was a good kick again by, by Jaime Barrero. Like you said, he has played a prominent part thus far. Like I said, he showed leg on that on that 35-yard uh, extra point, 33-yard extra point. He showed leg on that, so he just missed it to the left. So he, he can play a, a, a potent part here. They're only down by three if the defense can – Make a good three and out or, or make it a good stop here in the offense get the ball back right before halftime. Malone seeking space, and he's got space as he cuts it across the 50. On the carry. Down to the ground he goes at the Oldham 46-yard line and a scamper of 16. And just as I say that, Fern Creek feeds the man, feeds their main man right there, Michael Malone with the ball. He had 16 yards in the first quarter. Going to add to that total. It was a nice play right there. They kicked the defensive end out or the outside linebacker and just sealed down. And Malone had a nice hole right there. Bounced in and bounced out. Took it up the hole and bounced outside. Nice, nice run for a first down there. There you see Malone's numbers on the year. As Fern Creek recycles the downs. And a new back this time, it's Nolan. And Nolan will lose a pair as Josh Soder will string it out. Great play by Soder. Soder had one coming, and a, he had one on him and a second one coming, and he just stood it up. He just stood the guys up, and next thing the running back had no place to go. Then a host of colonels came in and helped his guy out. And next thing you know, it's a loss of, a loss of two, I think. Good play there by, by Soder. Second down and a dozen for Fern Creek as we tiptoe under eight minutes in this first half. Got a punt block, a touchdown, a missed extra point, and a safety. A little bit of everything on the high school football bingo card. Here's Malone, and Malone powering his way for a first down. And Malone down the near sideline to the 29-yard line. That was a good concept there by Fern Creek. They overload the side, so basically it was an unbalanced line. And then with the unbalanced line, they pulled both both guards to the right, and, and uh, Oldham County was just outmatched. There was nothing they could do. It was a numbers game. They were just outnumbered. But Oldham County catches a break here. I think it is a, a penalty on them. It they sure is. On Fern Creek, so a block in the back will negate the nice chunk yardage run from Michael Malone. Spot foul there, so Oldham County catch a break there to second, second and five. So when they see that, they're going to have to, you know, I don't know if Coach can see it down there. They're going to have to try to shift over or slide to the direction of that unbalanced line so they can have the same amount of numbers as Fern Creek. Otherwise, you're going to see Malone going up and down the field on that. And they're doing it right here now. You've got big number 74 going out there out there at the tackle, their tackle, tackle. There's Edwards on a design run. He's going to spring it outside, and he'll twist maybe a yard to the 39-yard line. Soder makes another play right there. And a little miscommunication there. You had number 74 right there, Tim Cherry, who did come, he slid over from his left tackle spot to his right, to the right tackle, so it's guard, tackle, tackle. But when the quarterback gave the down set hut, he didn't move. And when he didn't move, that kind of, they kind of blocked it up there for, 
the Fern Creek runner and had no place to go. And next thing you know, Soder comes in and makes a nice play. Edwards awaits the snap. And you can add five as Fern Creek appears to have jumped. So after a clean start for the Tigers, a couple of penalties on this drive, one of which will take the Tigers to third down and long. Yeah, this, this, this looks like the young team that we saw last week from Fern Creek where they're just making mistakes and, and not, not synchronized here. Uh, earlier looked like the Fern, the Fern Creek team from the J-Town game where they're just getting up and down the field. So, Will Young in motion. Edwards back to throw. He's looking for Young down the near oh, side. Nice play. Intercepted. Nice play. Miller nice. Brown with a pick. That's what you call a wheel route right there. The outside guy goes up and kind of does a little hook or maybe does a post. And the, in, the, the, the inside guy kind of wheels out there. And a lot of times the quarterback will bite in on the inside guy. But this time, Miller Brown did not bite on it, sat there and wait on it. And next thing you know, he has an interception. That's what Oldham County needed right there. Miller Brown with a nice interception right there. Caught it at his highest point. So Oldham County will take over here with about six minutes to go. Let's see if they can get some points or get some positivity out of this before halftime. Grant Gilchrist conversing with junior quarterback Zach Davis. Now two running backs, Osborne and Gilchrist. It's Osborne on the tote. And Osborne, Osborne stood up. The line is driven by a host of Tigers. Yeah, no room there for him. You got number 51 right there. He's one of the Short big boys inside, the Kendrick Johnson. And he's just making a play down. play right there, stuffing that, stuffing that up right up, right up the middle, giving none of that. Kendrick, 6'1", 304. I talked to him before the game. He was down punting. I said, are you the punter? And he, he said, oh, I'm one of them. <laughs> and he was booming them in practice. We'll see if he gets an opportunity. It's second down and long for OC. There's Gilchrist on an end around. And Gilchrist trying to break a tackle close to the marker. He needed the 30. Once Gilchrist got around that corner and Jaden Samuels, he shot up through there and he got right past Jaden Samuels. It looked like a positive play right there. Samuels just, just missed as he came up inside and Gilchrist got on the outside. So gains about seven right there. That's a nice play for the Oldham County uh, Colonels. Third down and two positive body language on the Oldham sideline. Tayshawn McBroom applauding his quarterback. Zach Davis came under to get the play call. Third down and a deuce. As Gilchrist now prancing up referee in the back behind just Davis. Gets it off. Just and gets it off. Gilchrist Good. trying to get two yards, and he will lunge forward. He's going to be at the naked eye about a yard short. Looks like he initially had that. Then he kind of faked himself out there. He, I think if he keeps on that straight line, he has the first down, but he dipped inside. When he dipped inside, the pursuit got, got right back to him. Okay, boys. Let's go for it from your own 28. Fourth down and one. And the Colonels need a yard, and they were power forward for a first down. Nice job there. Oldham County lined up, no huddle. Probably quick, quick call right there. First sound, they probably practice that all the time. I'm sure Coach McBroom practice that all the time. You know, fourth and inches, fourth and one. Line up, or they probably have a sound for that. You know, I don't know, Superman, Superman, anything. You know, whatever they may call it. But uh, they get right there, they get there, they first sound, hut. Give it to them. Uh, yeah, that's been worked on. You can see that's been worked on a lot. So stay in your seats and enjoy our band performance at halftime. Okay, Nas born in. He will spell Gilchrist after Grant doing much of the lumber there on that last sequence of plays. Edgar will get the flip, and Edgar looking to bounce outside, and Edgar with his first touch. Just shy of the 50, and a pickup of 19 yards. That was a really nice play there. So that's all set up. It's all set up by his wide out out there, and that was number 23. That's Caden Osborne. Osborne just just gets just enough of that defensive back out there, and next thing you know, the, the back cuts up inside, and and it's, what's a positive play of what 20 plus yards there. That was a great block there by Osborne. Timeout on the field called by Burn Creek. 
get a Burn look Creek. at that. He just makes a big play there. Tigers call timeout. We'll sort things out when we come back. Colonels down three, four to go in the half. surprisingly great rates contact your local state farm agent today if you want the real deal call state farm agent leslie gilly in crestwood today like a good neighbor state farm is there you're watching oldham county high schools football from glycod colonels on the march here just over four minutes in this first half, Chris LeVar along with Joey Hamilton, our producer tonight, Steve Bird, Mike Sumner shooting the coverage for you high atop. Chris Lander, Stadium Press Box. Osborne stood up at play very, at play very slow to develop, and Kendrick Johnson on the stop. Kendrick Johnson in there. You got Dar Darius Marshall in there. They're just not having it right there. It was a slow play. It was a trap, and it just wasn't going to happen. Those, those two interior guys right there just kind of shut that down. I think Zach Davis played quite well in this game. Oldham County quarterback Noah Stinson out six to eight weeks. Collarbone injury. That means Davis likely quarterback for the bulk of this season. He started week one and now starting in week three, and that's a great throw to Edgar, and Edgar brought down at the 50 after a pickup of two yards. Ramari Taylor with a greeting. And number eight, Jaden Samuels. Sutton makes the tackle, and then uh, and Samuels makes the hit there. So nice play. It's nice play there. I'm Taylor, I'm sorry, Taylor makes the hit there. So it's a, nice, it a nice play there, but I think if – quarterback he had already predetermined that he was going to throw it out there if he fakes it out there he's got another man wide open right behind Taylor they're down and long colonels went forward on fourth down and one from inside their own 25 Let's see what they elect to call here on third down and long and Davis plenty of time now rolling well, left here comes the oh. congregation and Davis Brought down after a loss of a couple at the 43. Kendrick Johnson again on the play, but he had a little room there when he's getting ready to scramble. He tripped right over his lineman. If he doesn't trip on his lineman's foot, he can probably he probably has a beat to get outside. But let's see, he tripped over his lineman's leg and he stumbled a little bit. It gave the Fern Creek defense a little opportunity to get back in there. Colonels two timeouts, Fern Creek only with one. Both squads will elect to watch the clock evaporate as Widden McCraney back to punt. He's already had one block. This one off in time. Caught at the 30 by the Tigers. A nice coverage up to the 35-yard line as Will Young saddled to the turf. Nice job there by Will Young. Handled the ball, made a couple moves there. Got some positive yards. That's what you want out of your punt return team and your returner especially. And it's good, you know, good kick. Oldham County does a good job of getting the ball off. So defense made interception last time. Let's see what Oldham County defense can do this time. We will chat with new Oldham County High School principal Natalie Brown. We will chat with her. Natalie's come far. She's uh, I remember her as a young as a young cheerleader back in the day, showing my age. But she's she's a very successful young lady. I'm very proud of her. Daughter of one Bob Redmond Edwards back to throw on a slant, oh. and that ball out of the oh. wicks That's of Taylor four. nearly gobbled up for a pick. Up well, number 42 there was going to make a nice play. Uh, ball do not have him there, but number 42 playing defensive back. Thought the ball's going to, it's one of those pick plays that bounce right in his hands. He may take it back for six. So the incomplete pass, of course, stops the clock. And the Tigers protecting this three point lead. Edwards. Good pressure. Good pressure. pressure up the gut it is. And Edwards going to heave it down for an incomplete pass. Some crafty, crafty play by Edwards. Good, good. Good uh, coverage there by the defense, but better pressure by the front four. They got in there quickly, 
on uh, on Edwards, and next thing you know, Edwards had to scramble left, and he's throwing the ball. It looked like Kyler Murray there a little bit. You know, he did a little ball fake there, but just overthrew his receiver. Good job there by the Oldham County front four. So 143 left. Let's get behind our defense on this third and, and after Josh Abel, do you keep this on the ground? Malone flanked to the left of Edwards. I'm not sure if Fern Creek wants to give the ball back with this amount of time and timeouts. Malone powering his way, and he's going to pick up a first down right, on third down, down and 10. Down by 17. Well, that's okay Tyler for Rutt. Oldham County. You know, Malone he three, comes there and gets Brown. the first down. He moves the chains, but the clock's still running. Tyler Roar and Miller Brown make a nice play there. The clock's, the clock should still be running timeout. unless they're going to call a timeout here. They're not calling a timeout, so the clock's running. And, that's, that's for the betterment of Oldham County right now. Edwards rolling right, and he's going to look for Young, and Young has it intercepted. Woo! Intercepted by the Colonels. It'll be scooped away by David, David Turner. Turner. David Turner, good coverage there. Edwards tries to send him deep there, and Turner just stays right with him, and next thing you know, he underthrows him just slightly, and Turner goes up to highest point and gets the ball. That's a big play. That's two interceptions right there by Oldham County tonight. So David Turner with the interception, and we'll see what Oldham does. Again, they'll have the football to start the second half as well. As part of that youth experiment out there they've got. He's a sophomore. So got David Turner out there and a couple other sophomores getting some varsity action. First time this year, and they're looking good. They're hanging tough. It's been a very, very evenly played game. Entertaining as well. Davis on an out. And he'll miss fire looking for Edgar. Incomplete. That was a little better coverage there that time by Fern Creek. Number 43 there, uh, Darius Woodford. He stayed right there with him the first time. He wasn't with him. And, and then the cornerback came up, that, and that would be Taylor. This time Taylor stayed back with and if he makes, if the quarterback makes the throw there, a nice throw, he may have some room to run on that. Elkins split out wide. Edgar's in the slot. As Davis now up under center on second down and long. And Gilchrist. Gilchrist on the carry. A very moderate gain to the 24-yard line. No room to oh, run in there. No room to run out there. Uh, it's number 52, second, Antoine. Number Antoine Harry Denson. Woodford. Denson coming in, making the play. It'll be third about nine. Colonel's going conservative here, and you can't blame them. They do not want to miss you back inside their 25-yard line. That's what I do, too, if I'm coaching a game. I'm going to let this clock run down. I'm going to try to take as much time as I can, try to get, get out of here, 9-6, re regroup. I think we get the football, second half, get the ball first thing. And who's called this time well, Somebody's called time. Alan Gray said he stopped play for a moment. Perhaps it's incidental, so we'll play on. Okay, here we go. Clock's running back. It's a positive for it. Oh, don't put it in the air. Davis, he's looking for Elkins. And Elkins heavily contested for an incompletion. Yeah. Fourth down and Didn't look like a good play the right there. They had two receivers, I mean, two defensive backs on the receiver. Elkins was covered up, he bottled up on that. Uh, never tell a coach. I'd never tell a coach what to do, but I, I would have felt better if coach would have ran a little Back clock off the there, Colonels, you know, McCraney. so they could get out of here. But you know, coach may see something I don't. So, well, and now they'll have to punt perhaps and snap it back inside their own territory. We'll keep things here as Oldham elects to call timeout. And Will Young had a nice return last time, so you, you know you're hoping that you don't have to do that. That sun is down both teams so you don't have to worry Not about that but I believe that was called by Oldham County join us at halftime again we'll chat with new Oldham County High School principal Natalie Brown we'll also take a look at high school football lots going on tomorrow night in week three South Oldham up the road looking for their first win against a very strong Ballard team and uh, Ballard perhaps coming off their best win in, in uh, many a season oh that was a great win. that was a great win for the Bruins you know the Bruins they the coach Coach need a, Coach Adrian, I call him Adrian because I know personally <laughs> yeah. Coach Morton, but Adrian needed a signature win right there, and so and that was his signature win. You know, like, he's been close, he's been close, and especially after last year with the indu induction of the new uh, stadium there, the new turf field, they they didn't introduce it too well, and Manuel 
kind of put a whooping on him, so he needed that. That was big for him. And McCraney will get it out of Dodge, barely. It's caught at the 41 by Young, and nice punt coverage by Oldham as Young brought down at the 48. There he is, number three, making play after play after play. That's Miller Brown. Miller Brown's been all over the field. He's got interceptions, making a couple tackles. He made a, made a touchdown saving tackle against Malone earlier. Miller Brown's having a heck of a game. First, this first half. A lot of individual heroics in this half. Joey told you about a few. And then for Fern Creek, Cameron Trice, a punt block and touchdown. That's the difference in this game. As the Tigers lead by three, and perhaps a knee will take us to the turn. Yeah, I was thinking about brought the Bruins up. I was thinking they're playing Jamie Reed tonight in South Oldham. And then it would be an excellent opportunity for Coach Reed to get the upset special when a team wins a game like that. They're really high on the, on the horse. A misdirection, a handoff across the 43. Fern Creek does have a timeout left, and looks like they will elect to take things to half, or will they? Well, that's Miller nope. Brown on the stop right there. There's a nice end around there, and the back kind of stuttered, stuttered. I didn't know what. Kind of waiting, timeout. so uh, I thought he was going to get upfield, and he's kind of waiting for his blocks, and Brown just came up and made a nice play. I think both coaches uh, have to be pleased with their teams playing this half. Oh, yeah, both coaches. I know they're super excited after talking with both of them earlier today. I know they're super excited at what they've done. You know, as you said, Oldham County, they're looking for progress. They're looking for something. And if, you know, Coach Coach McBroom, from where they were to where they are at this point right now, he knows they've been moving forward and they're doing, doing well. He's telling the preparation that he's done for the week. Also, Coach Abel, you know, the first week they had a big win last week. Uh Field trip, as he said, that his kids you know, out, went to Lexington and, uh, and you know, got humbled a little bit, but they learned a lot. And so you can see that they've taken that preparation, that learning lesson into this first half, and they've got a 9-6 lead right now. now. Fern Creek does have those two turnovers, two interceptions, but they've cut down on penalties. That was a huge issue for them last week. They've cleaned up some things, and this game going to be decided, one would think, in the second half. Is this play perhaps the final play of first half? and their tackling's been a little more sure, too, on defense. Edwards will hand to Holden, and Holden, that'll conclude the half. So halftime in Buckner, Fern Creek, and Oldham County in a tussle. It's Thursday night football. Joey and I have more after this on Glycod. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Visit your locally owned power equipment dealer, Anderson Sales and Service in Madison, Crestwood, and our newest location at 1675 Waterson Trail in Louisville. If your car's been damaged, regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. Founded in 1910 in the Ohio Valley region, German American Bank has been raising the standards in banking, insurance, investments, and wealth management for over a century. We're big enough to provide the conveniences of modern banking, yet small enough to care about the people and communities we serve. Because we believe that when a community thrives, its people prosper. Strengthening our community since 1910. German American Bank. LaGrange Service Center is a professional automotive service center that aims to provide the highest level of customer satisfaction. Their team is dedicated to performing honest and ethical work. Their experienced technicians make affordably priced immediate and scheduled repairs. Plus, they offer 24-hour emergency roadside assistance and much more. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street or call 502-222-1673. 
LaGrange Service Center. Tonight's halftime report is brought to you by LaGrange Service Center, a family owned car repair shop that also offers 24 7 towing and roadside assistance. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street, celebrating their 58th year in business. Thursday night football live in Buckner, an evenly played first two quarters. Fern Creek on top of Oldham 9 6. Chris Labar interviewing first year Oldham County High School principal Natalie Brown, and it's great to cross paths again. Absolutely. How it's are great you to doing? See you. I'm doing fantastic. I thought we were going to take the take the lead after that second interception, but I'm still excited and hopeful. There's so many commonalities we can discuss, but Oldham County, your first year, your what is your vision for this school? Well, lots. This school is an unbelievable opportunity. It is a just wealth of potential here. Our kids are fantastic. Um, big vision is to continue to improve our academic success, which I want to talk about anytime and all the time. Um, kind of get that culture back. The pandemic's tough on everybody, so we're working really hard to um, just get back into the group of school with pep rallies and, and fun things for kids. And our kids are really responding to the, the opportunities that we're offering them to just enhance school. I mean, high school is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I want them to remember their time at OC. How would you describe the thirst for these sorts of things post pandemic? Huge. The kids respond tremendously. We've, we've brought them together for a class meeting and who knew that we would appreciate the opportunity to meet together. We, we took that for granted back in our day. So for these kids to get together, they're just, they're so polite, respect their hunger for the information. Our um, ozone down here is unbelievable. The kids, get, they talk about it, they plan for it. It's a big deal what we bring to the table. It's awesome. They're all over social media, all over Twitter. Just won an award, I believe, for the, the best student section in, in the, the state. state. Yep, you got it. And they're very proud of that, too. They want to continue to improve each week, and their antics are funny. <laughs> they're sometimes borderline, but as long as they're appropriate, we love it. I keep saying it's interesting, I'm sure. <laughs> it is interesting. What, what about test scores? All right, well, they're still embargoed, but I, I'm going to just give a little hint that we're very excited to share our ACT scores, especially these kids have had to learn from home for parts of the year. They still got it done, and I'm very proud of them. Athletics, you know, David is so good. David uh, Latender, your athletic director. Uh, your, what is your take on, on the current state of high school athletics as a whole? Um, that's an interesting question. I think – there's, there's a lot of, um, we've got to build it back. We've got to kind of build the momentum and the enthusiasm back a little bit. I think sometimes now kids have just kind of gotten used to sit, sitting back, going to work, doing different things. But that's, a, I think that's a short time, a short time deal. Um, Latender is doing a great job, you know, advertising our sports, getting things done. We're, we're doing everything we can to r remind these kids what it's like to be on the field and play sports. It's a different animal now than it's ever been before. Transfers and, and so many exterior things. It just seems like it's just completely different, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, for sure. I, it is. It is. Um, but it's everything. I'm a strong believer, and maybe this is my background, but that athletics and activities like the band, the dance team, football, basketball, those are all great ways to connect kids with school. And when we, we know that when we connect kids to a school, they have more academic success. So I love to use the athletics and academics or to build on our academics. This is a great school. I could just is. tell how excited you are to be in this position. Yes, sir, you got that right. I'm very <laughs> excited to be a colonel. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Good to Thank see you. you. That's Natalie Brown, first-year head principal here at Oldham County High School. Great game, by the way. Thursday night football in Buckner, Fern Creek, on top of Oldham County, 9-6. Be right back with a look at your first-half stats and storylines in a moment. Range Service Center is a professional automotive service center that aims to provide the highest level of customer satisfaction. Their team is dedicated to performing honest and ethical work. Their experienced technicians make affordably priced immediate and scheduled repairs. Plus, they offer 24-hour emergency roadside assistance and much more. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street or call 502-222-1673. LaGrange Service Center. Welcome to WDRB Home Design here at Watts Home Center. Today we're talking ways to give your home a facelift. Jim, what are some updates and trends for doors this season? The most popular door of the year so far has been this three quarter six light shown here as a double French door. I've sold this in this configuration, a door with side lights, a single door. People are loving the natural light this year. In addition to doors, windows are another great way to update your home, right? Absolutely. There's no better way to increase your home's energy efficiency than new 
new windows. And if you're about to sell your house, nothing looks better on a property listing than new windows. So can you and your team provide me an estimate to match my particular budget? Absolutely. With multiple products and vendors, we can work with your budget to get your home the product it needs. The Watts Home Center team can answer all of your window and door questions. So come on out and see them here in LaGrange or go to wattshomecenter.com to learn more. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. A nip and tuck affair in Buckner, Fern Creek, plus three at the turn. Be back after this on Glycod. Summer is here. That puts a lot of strain on your air conditioner. Are you ready? Call Thompson Heating and Cooling today for an HVAC checkup. Because the last time you want to find out your air conditioner isn't working is when you really need it. At Thompson, we offer a two-hour appointment window so you won't be kept waiting all day. We're fully stocked and prepared, and 90% of our calls are repaired that day. And as always, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call us today for express service. If your car's been damaged, regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. A lot goes into taking care of your property. You need equipment with more durability, versatility, and number one rated reliability built in. Like Kubota compact tractors that can do it all right, Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut, and the Sidekick utility vehicle built for hard work and fun at 40 miles per hour. Kubota equipment lives up to the highest standards. Yours. Visit your local dealer today. Glycon on YouTube is Kentuckiana's fastest growing high school sports video site. When you click to subscribe, don't forget to tap the bell and be notified of our upcoming live broadcasts and other unique video content. Subscribe for free now at youtube.com backslash Glycon. Looking for sound, prudent financial advice? Did you know that one of the brightest and best financial advisors is in your own backyard? Robin Lawson of Financial Solutions Incorporated has a mission to understand your long-term goals and to create a specific strategy just for you. Robin understands the challenges that face most of us today and offers fresh, out-of-the-box thinking that can put you on the road to financial freedom. Contact Robin Lawson today at 502-225-9900. That's 502-225-9900 or visit LawsonFinancial.net. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glacod. A great first half, Fern Creek by three. Welcome, Joey Hamilton back. I'm Chris Labar, and uh, a great ball game, and uh, certainly only settled by that uh, safety in the first half. Yeah, the safety. The safety's made the made the difference right here. That's you know, call it a team safety there, but a uh, little snap over the head there, and the quarterback made the the safe and the correct decision to push that out of the end zone. That still gives Oldham County a chance right here. They're only down by three, and you know, with their kicker. Uh, Jaime Barrero, you know, he could kick a 25-30 yarder. Uh, he's got the leg to do that to get them right back and tie the game up, you know. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, speaking of offense, Fern Creek, Malone, he had a positive, very positive first half. He had he had five carries for 44 yards, uh, you know, and that was really nice on him. Then Cameron Trice had uh, three carries for six yards, pretty good there. On Oldham County, you had, you had Gilchrist at 11 carries for 35 yards, but the big play for Oldham County was on fourth down when the 
quarterback there uh, made a scramble for fourth and 10, or I guess it was fourth and 10, and he gained 11, which kept that drive going, which, you know, that helped to help him get the 11-yard pass to Holman for a touchdown. So Cameron tries punt block and then a touchdown for Fern Creek. Oldham County on the board. Zach Holman, 11-yard receiving touchdown in a safety late in the first half. So two bad snaps, pretty much keeping Fern Creek in the game offensively. That's it. That's the thing that uh, Coach uh, – Coach McBroom talked about, he talked about they need consistency. You know, you need positive play after positive play after positive play. And if you do have a negative play, don't let it be a backbreaker like that. That's almost like a backbreaker where, you know, over the head, safety. Pot, you know, a special teams, punt block right there. You know, he needs, needs some things that are, that are consistent. And uh, for the Colonels, they're going to get the football to start this uh, second half. What would you look for? Any tweaks offensively? Uh, I, would, I would look to give the – what what they did was get, give the big guy the ball, give give him the ball, and then also give it to Gilchrist right off tackle. That seemed to be the thing. But then they had a real a really successful play when Gilchrist was out of the game. There, you know, they gave it to number thirteen, Travis Egger, and Egger does a little end around there and gets a great great block there by Kay Osborne for a positive play. So it seemed like when uh, Gilchrist is not in the game, they don't really have anybody to key on. So. That, that that seemed to be that seemed to be going in the right direction there too. But like I said, I I would always I would always go back and give it to the big man, uh, Caden Shepard. <laughs> I love I love giving him the ball. You know he had some, he had some nice carries there. As a matter of fact, Caden had he had, he had three carries for 13 yards. You know it's averaging 4.3 yards a carry. So that, you know that's not bad at all. It's not the bulk of the yardage. It's the timely nature of them. Whenever they need something, he's going to get the call on those tight confines. Well, he, he did. And then on the fourth and inches there, they just went to a no huddle. And he wasn't in the game. They gave it to Gilchrist. But, you know, it was one of those things that you can tell that Coach McBroom has, is prepared. He has his team prepared. Because, you know, most times, you know, guys will muddle around, do this. And, they, you know, the call could be fire, fire, fire. The next thing you know, everyone lines up in the right spot. Quarterback gets under there. Hut. Next thing you know, gives it right to Gilchrist. Gilchrist busts up in there, you know, gets the, gets the two yards that need it for the first down. So that, that's a good job. You, you can tell he's a well-coached team. What would you like best about Zach Davis's play in the first half? Zach showed he showed consistency. You know, he, Zach, uh, he was two for six, uh, 14 yards there. Uh, has the one touchdown, was right on the mark there. You know, a couple other passes. Uh, I think Coach McBroom, they will work on him there, you know, where he just dropped back. And as a young guy, he just kind of threw it, you know. So that's going to come. That time is going to come down the road where he drops back and it kind of opens his eyes. You know, as you as you play as a young guy, the game is fast. It's quick. But I'm sure the game, as, as he goes this year, the game's going to slow down for him a little bit. As it slows down a little bit for him, he's going to be able to drop back, have that football right there, take that step and zoom, and put it right in there on his, on his players. Just like, I mean, whatever that was, that when he hit the tight end for, for the touchdown, if he could do that more often, I mean, because that was a nice pass right there, nice pass. And for Fern Creek, their offense has sputtered at times, but they've done some good things. And I tell you, running back Michael Malone is some kind of talent. Uh, Malone's a real deal. You know, you've got to keep feeding him right there. As, uh, you know, if, if I'm a Fern Creek fan, I'm like, I don't think you give it to him enough. Yeah. I would have gave it to him at least three, four, five, six more times because every time he seems to touch it, he, make, he makes a nice run. And then also there's number 26. I don't know his name. But they give it to him, and he's 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 had a couple nice runs there too, right before the half. And you know he's got two he's got two carries for 22 yards. You know that's over 11 yards of carry. So so you know if I have an average like that, I'm like, coach, feed me the ball. I'm, I'm average 11 yards of carry. Give me the ball. You know so they they've done well. And Land, Landon Edwards, he's he's had he's had a couple nice balls, but there was no one there. And then and then the the two that he did complete were interceptions. You know and and and, and then. Early, early, he did have one nice pass there, and but I think the sun was right in his receiver's eyes because that was uh, that was early when that sun was out big and hit his hit his receiver right in the numbers, uh, dropped the ball. But like I said, he he has he has completed two, but there he just happened to be to the wrong team. So uh, he, he's a young kid. You know, both these quarterbacks are young. You know, both you know, both of them don't have any varsity action basically. So. You know, the coaches have to be thrilled with what they've got this first half. Yeah, some building blocks for sure for both of these teams and uh, for construction pieces. South Oldham tomorrow, Joey 0-2. They haven't been 0-2 in a long time. Taking on a Ballard team, how do you size that up? Oh, Coach Reed is, uh, well, you know, he found a running back last week. You know, he had a, he had a kid that came in uh, from Florida, and, uh, you know, his main running back, he, uh, as we talked about, collarbone, you know, he, he was out. So when he got out, you could tell that first game, 
uh, when he went when he went down, you could tell the team was trying to find itself because they lost him right for the first game, and there was their there was their main guy, there was their senior. So they're looking for some leadership there. And second game when they played Fairdale, they were right there in the game, and and you know, the running back, their uh, their Florida transfer, he came in. And I think he had about 137 yards, so it wasn't bad. So I know with the week of preparation. Coach Reed is going to get his team better and better and better in each week. And on the other other hand, Coach Morton, you know, a great win, but I kind of envy you because I've been there where, you know, you have a great win one week and, you know, sky high and everybody's patting you on the back and telling you what a great job you're doing. And, you know, sometimes high school kids can't handle it and they're like, ah, Coach, you can't tell me. They just told me how great I'm playing. So this will be an excellent excellent opportunity or you know the platform there for south oldham to have a huge upset tonight north oldham at uh, holy cross tomorrow mustangs off to a one and one beginning uh, mustangs are doing well you know coach thornberry are out there there's thornberries out there you know they're, they're doing well and you know they're, they're making a nice little comeback this year uh, they got the quarterback back you know and uh, and so they're going to do a good job out there i think i think north uh i'm sorry i think holy cross is gonna gonna do some things out there north oldham They've got a well of a defense, dude. That defense is just lights out. I mean, Liam Hudson. Oh, I, Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, Liam Hudson, number 14. I, I, I'm sorry. If I got his, <laughs> you got a lot of numbers I, to yeah, figure but out. Yeah, I, I but know, I know numbers. When you say numbers, I said that number 14. <laughs> that, that's the coach in me. I'm like, on film, that number 14. That number 14 makes plays. That number 14. And then when I watch the film, that number 14 is always around. He's always around the ball. You know, he had interceptions last week. The defense lights out him and Noah, La- Noah Labor. Those kids, they're, they're on fire. That is a strong defense, and they're going to carry their team this year. Second half, next. Founded in 1910 in the Ohio Valley region, German American Bank has been raising the standards in banking, insurance, investments, and wealth management for over a century. We're big enough to provide the conveniences of modern banking, yet small enough to care about the people and communities we serve. Because we believe that when a community thrives, its people prosper. Strengthening our community since 1910. German American Bank. You're watching Oldham County High School's football from Glycod. Oldham County football as we welcome you back to Buckner Bellfield at Chris Lander Stadium. This uh, field very, very historic. There's some discussion it will move to turf at some point. But a very immaculate field here in what is early September, week three for high school football 2022. This is one of those fields. It's been it's been in great shape, gosh, since the 90s, since early 90s. I, you know, I came out here and I helped a young man by the name of Curtis Higgins coach in 1991 and, uh, and came out here. And they, I just thought the facilities out here were immaculate. The only thing that's gone is that little deer stand that was over by the stadium. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> they had a deer stand back there. But it, I was like, they ought to keep that up for sentimental reasons. But everything else out here, you know, they have nice seven-on-seven seven tournaments in the summer. You've got this beautiful baseball stadium right right behind the football field. It, it's it's a great complex, really nice, first class. We'd like to thank Principal Natalie Brown for joining us for her halftime comments. Uh, and the Colonels will have possession, Osborne and Gilchrist back parallel with one another. Excellent opportunity there for uh, Miss Brown there. Glad she got the job here. Uh, the other school will have nothing but uh, positivity with her in, in the building. Beck, a winding punt, Gilchrist. At the 20 as the wedge develops, and Gilchrist down the near sideline, some headgear flaunted, but no flag. And Oldham football across the 44. That was a nice return there. His little, I guess you want to call it a right return. He catches there, and they, you can see uh, the turnout by the by the uh, by the return team. Some guys turned out, and then some other guys blocked down, and there's just a little seam there, and he gains about 30, 35 yards there. That was a very nice return. A lot of positive there for Oldham County, and they're up past the 40 yard line. Mason Sidoris, first out of the huddle. He'll spill top of your screen there in a new concoction of a formation as Shepard, perhaps a decoy, as Osborne slides it across the 45. That's Game nice, of about three yards. Nice run there. Like I said, the invert set again. Instead of giving it to the back or the running back in the back, they gave it to the one on the right and his back in the back and the left uh, fullback, they just lead block there. One turns out, one blocks down. Gain a little four or five yards there, so positivity. 
thus far. Got an Oldham injury as the officials stop play. And it's Caden Osborne beneath us that was ailing with that left, favoring that left arm. You can't see it at the bottom of your screen, but he's going to have a seat at the sideline. And Oldham will reshuffle the alignment here on second down and long. Uh, looks like they brought in Caden Shepard there in the back. And Shepard gets the call. And he'll trudge forward for a couple and a big third down on the first drive of this half. Nice run there by Caden Shepard. Stopped there by Travis Morton. Moten, but I mean, Shepard just went in there like, like, boom, just went in there at full speed. And, and I bet that was a heck of a collision down there. I mean, those two big bodies down there, and, you know, something had to give a little bit, but Shepard came out in the positive end that with about three or four yards. This Oldham offensive line has done quite well tonight in the run game. In the power out right. This time it's Gilchrist trying to bounce outside. He's got a burst and a first across the 45 to the 42 and an eight-yard pickup. Was nice job, really nice job there. And looking at the wide out out there, Jacob, Jason e Eakins. You know, Eakins makes a nice, nice block out there. You know, and that's the wide out in me. You know, you see him out there uh, making that block, help, helping to spring that first down. That's Jackson Elkins, returning starter. 6'3", 179 pounds, senior for the Colonels. Yeah, he's had some. He's had some key plays in the game. He's been. He's been a positive. He's been a positive force out there for him. And Shepard in the belly of as he's <laughs> got it across the forty <laughs> down to the thirty-eight. <laughs> Little speed there. I like that. They gave it to him off tackle, and he bounced it outside. Uh, Caden Shepard, show him what you got, Shake Caden. <laughs> show him what you got. I like that. He, Went up inside and went went to the left and showed a little foot speed there. Had another big man out there, and he he said, I'm faster than you. You may be as big as me, but I'm faster than you. I like that. Show a little speed, gained about three or four yards there. Nice job. Nice ball control beginning of this half as the Colonels, after the long punt return, rather the kick return, and a oh. flag trailing that play. There's a flag oh, trailing that play. Man. You saw that right from the start. He, the one the alignment right there just grabbed a Fern Creek player. I mean, it was pretty obvious right there. He just kind of grabbed him, pulled him back. So that was that was uh, very apparent right there. Number two there, Isaac Bowman had a nice he had a nice little gain right there, but uh, one of his linemen just reached out and grabbed, and that's what Coach McBroom does not want to see right there. That's one of those things where we're moving the ball down the field. We got a nice positive drive here. And then they have a penalty, so they're going to put them back in midfield. Back to throw, and there's Bowman, and he's tangled down at the 49-yard line. Anthony Sutton right there with a nice play. If Sutton doesn't make that play, it looks like, looks like Bowman's going to gain at least maybe about 10 yards there, at least get back to the original line of scrimmage. But there's a nice, nice job there by the defensive back. Third down now, 21 officially. How many of these in the playbook? Third down and 21s. And some untimely penalties in this game. And for the Colonels, they were well on their march. And now behind the sticks, trying to set something up for Elkins. Quick screen. And Elkins trudging forward. He'll pick up a few. Nice setup right there. Good play right there. Elkins had a little room, and then all of a sudden, the Fern Creek player just came right in there and just blew it up. That was number four. That's Taylor. He came in there and just blew it up. But Taylor just splits the two uh, Oldham County wideouts and just makes the play right there in Elkins. Otherwise, Elkins would have had a little room. So, Witten McCraney back on the pawn. His first offering was blocked by Cameron Trice and recovered. That's the difference in this game. Bring a lot of pressure off the left. Looks like it looks like they're overloading that. And McCraney Good. nearly got that one blocked again. It's gobbled up on the run by Taylor. And Taylor upended down at the 35-yard line. That's a good job there by Taylor. I don't think some of the Oldham County players even knew he had the ball there at being the up back, but that was also ended up being a good stop there by number three, Mr. Miller. Yeah, Miller Brown has had an outstanding game, an interception. Colonels with uh, two takeaways tonight. He's all over the field, 
all over the field. We'll see the adjustments of Tigers coach Josh Abel. Josh in year nine for Fern Creek. Only Mills Chris Wolf has longer tenure amongst the JCPS programs. You get the sense this uh, Fern Creek bunch had all that success in 2015 and 16. You get the feeling like these younger players perhaps more reminiscent of some of those successful teams some oh. five, eight years ago. Oh, yeah. They look like they like they can compete, but they play in one of the toughest districts <laughs> in, in the state. Is that a fumble? Looks like the Colonels. Oldham County players are pointing that way. Malone with the carry. The Colonels said they had it, but not confirmed. Dalen Hall on a nice stop there. Nice, nice open field tackle there. Wrapped up Malone. Good play right there. But as I was saying, Fern Creek they play in one of the tougher districts. They have Mail and Bullet East. You know they can go eight and two and still finish third. Well, yeah, and, and Southern's a little bit better than Southern's they've been the last. Southern's played very well. Yes, yeah, Southern, they've been on the come up, you know, here in the last year or two. So, like I said, it's one of the tougher districts. Malone will lower the shoulder and bulldoze his way for a couple up to the 38. That's Trenton Lambert on a nice play right there. Nice wrap up. Big third down here for our defense. Let's get behind them. So third down and seven. Come on, County defense is been doing a heck of a job here. I don't want to jinx them. They've been doing a really good job here uh, the last few third downs here, so huge play here for the Colonels. It's like we're in Starkville with these Cowbells on third down and long. Yeah, they got them going here. I love it. I love it. Great camera work up top as Edwards rolling against his body. What will he do on third down and long? Pressure. Pressure. Trying to string it across. Is he getting a nice play? Back at the 28-yard line. That was a great play right there. Fred, Fred Scarborough, number 52 right there. Also would help by number 34, Trent Lambert. Lambert puts a little pressure on him, makes the quarterback roll back to the right, and Scarborough comes in and saves the day. Nice tackle right there. Huge play by the Oldham County defense. An official stop, and it will be fourth down and very, very long for Fern Creek. Huge upgrade thus far by that Oldham County defense. You know, the first game of the season, they gave up, like I said, 186 yards rushing, 200 yards passing. They even fumbled for a Simon, a Simon Kitten touchdown that first game when they lost 56-16. to They've come a long way. Andrew Beck's kick is very high but short. Miller-Brown directing traffic, and it's going to trickle out at the 34-yard line, so that'll go in the books. It's about a 36-yard punt. At this point, Coach McBroom can do nothing but smile the way, the way that defense has been trending up. You know, from game one to game two, the Shelby County game, like when they had a, they had a couple plays there where they, they scored a touchdown off turnovers and called back. Now this game right here so far, knock on wood, should be giving up nine points, so they're trending up. I think there needs to be uh, legislation to have a Thursday night game each week oh, in high school I football. I love Thursday Let's make night it happen. As long as I get to do it. <laughs> with with Glycod <laughs> being there every, <laughs> Thursday, right. every Thursday, we're there. I'm in on Thursdays. I love this. It, to all the decision makers, make it happen. We'll see you next Thursday. Hey. In, in the shotgun is Davis. And here's an end around, and Gilchrist prodding forward. Gilchrist. No flag thrown as Gilchrist close to a first down. Nice block there by Jackson Elkins right there. Gilchrist kind of it's a little off tackle play. A little action showing left sweep, but it gives it off to the underneath back. Gilchrist, Gilchrist goes right off tackle and, and gets another. Colonels first down. I'm loving it. You surprised they've been able to run the ball as well? No, I'm not. Actually, I'm not. I'm looking at that line. I'm, I've been watching the interior, and they're, they're, they're doing a really well, – it's, it's been a good battle. Let's just say it's been a good battle. You know, it's, it's back and forth. It's been a – Really good battle. So, no, I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. There's your boy, Shepard. It takes three to bring him down as he'll rip off three more. Shepard, that's a nice run right there, brought down by number eight, Jaden Samuels. But he needed a little help there from two other <laughs> friends. I mean, he is a true bull truck runner right there. And if they catch someone off guard that he gets ahead of steam, I'm only, I'm afraid of what he might do on his little defensive backs, running one of those guys over. There is Zach Davis in the shotgun on second down. Gilchrist and a first down to the 47-yard line and a gain of 11. 
nice hole right there. Anthony Sutton's is a uh, touchdown saving tackle right there. All they did was uh, do a little power out to the left and then gave it to Gilchrist back deep. And our man, our man Caden Shepard helps create that hole. Oldham going hurry up here. Gilchrist again with the tote. This time it's thick inside for a pickup of about two. Kendrick Johnson will not be uh, will not be denied this time. He says, "You got me last play. You won't get me this play." Makes the tackle there on Gilchrist. Got an injured Fern Creek Tiger. Take a quick break. 4:28, third quarter. Glycod.com Thursday night football. Summer is here. That puts a lot of strain on your air conditioner. Are you ready? Call Thompson Heating and Cooling today for an HVAC checkup. Because the last time you want to find out your air conditioner isn't working is when you really need it. At Thompson, we offer a two-hour appointment window so you won't be kept waiting all day. We're fully stocked and prepared, and 90% of our calls are repaired that day. And as always, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call us today for express service. You're watching Oldham County High School's football from Glacod. Back to live action in Buckner. The second down and eight, Oldham. Just over four minutes in this third quarter. Look right there in a passing set this time. Gilchrist back there by himself. Here's a flip oh, and end around and an untimely turnover. Isaac I, Bowman I think could that not. might be called an incomplete pass. It's an incomplete pass because the way he gave that off, he kind of pushed it forward, and the, the receiver never had it. And that's you know I've seen that happen. And first time I saw it, I was like, "What do you mean they're giving him passing yards for that?" That was a handoff, but since he kind of just flipped it to him, it's going to be called an incomplete pass. That's a good situation from o from Oldham County. Not a great situation for Fern Creek. Fern Creek thought they had a turnover there. Oldham County gets to live another day here, third down. Third down and long. Clock idle at 4-13. Both teams seeking a non-district win. Oldham looking for their first one of the year. Davis back to throw, and he's got a wide oh. open target, and it's incomplete. Breaking wide open in the seam was Bowman. Bowman got past the linebacker. Once he got past the linebacker, he was wide open, and it Zach can just put a little more air under it, just a little more uh, on there, and that'll be a, it'd be a great catch right there. He just threw it just a tad bit short for his wide out. Couldn't get to it. Smart call here by Coach to punt it, try to play the field position game. Still, still, you know, got, got four minutes to go here in the third quarter, so, you know, plenty of time there. Play the field position game. Defense has been doing a good job. They can hold If they can hold Fern Creek down there and they can possibly get the ball back a little better field position. See what McCraney can do. Can he steer the Tigers back? A oh. high, high kick. There is a flag back where McCraney punted that ball. There is a flag as Young thrown out of bounds at the 14. It looks like he's going to be running into the kicker, so maybe on a five-yard penalty there. Won't be a 15, be a five, so it'll still be fourth and I don't know, about three or four. We'll see what the official is, but that might entice the Colonels to go for it. Well, well, I didn't know. I didn't know if you could uh, take five yards off the return of where they went, or because you know, if I'm Oldham County, as close as they've been getting to that ball, I really wouldn't feel comfortable about punting the ball. Burn Creek has been getting close to that punter every time. Colonels' offense going back on the field, so fourth and eight will be reduced to fourth and three. And just as we suspected, Oldham now will go for it. Is this Caden Shepard time here, or do we do a little misdirection again with number 13, Travis Edgar? Uh, kind of tough to see what they're going to do. It looks like someone is, oh, Fern Creek calling a timeout. That's huge right there. That's a huge, huge decision right there because using one of those timeouts early here in the third quarter, Mark that down, 354 in the third quarter. We'll Burn keep Creek things. have to use a timeout. Sure will, and we'll keep things right here. And another big play. Oldham one for one on fourth down with Zach Davis with that big scramble earlier. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, two for two because huh. uh, two for two they did the fourth and inches. So, yeah, but, but yeah, Zach, Zach, his play was uh, was very – that's a prevalent play. I mean, you keep that in the back of your mind. That is what 
That's what helped him get the points. That was the key play of that drive. And then the fourth and inches, uh, after they did that, you know, they came back, and then I think they threw a few passes there right toward the end of the half. But then again, the defense ended up bailing them out again with an interception. So we'll see. This, this is going to be huge. It's interesting to see what Coach is coming up with. Maybe Coach is going to dig back in his, in, his, in his bag of tricks here and come up with this. Because, you know, we always have – oh, well, we used to always have a play of the week. You know, have a play of the week. You call it, you call it, you call it the uh, – this being a family show, can't call it the BS play of the week. <laughs> but it's it, too we late. <laughs> we, had, we had a play on a Thursday night. We had a play of the week, and, you know, so it's like this is what we're going to do. And this, So this, let's watch. Fourth down and three. Gilchrist behind Davis, who is crouched up under center. Flip to Gilchrist. Bounces he's room, outside, he's and he sure does have that first down, down to the 25-yard line. Timing is everything. Great snap, great toss, great blocking, nice run, first down. It, it, the two times they've done it before, they were one, they were they were 500. The one time with the quarterback, bad snap, he reaches over to his right, gets it out to the back late. Number five for Fern Creek comes in, makes a play. That's Javion Fisher. Next time, nice toss there. Uh, Gain a few yards this time was perfect. It was picture perfect. Couldn't ask for a better play right there. First down and 10, Oldham from the 26. Gilchrist trying to bounce outside again. Cuts inside, and the trailer will take him a couple yards shy of a first down as he's saddled up at the 17. Got a hold out there by one of the linemen. I think it's number 62 there. Looks like he grabbed hold of someone. It was he also got two Fern Creek injuries. There were two student athletes cramping a couple of plays ago. Got a pair of Tigers down on that left sideline. I think that's 62, uh, but I don't see his name, in, which I know he'd be happy about that. Don't call my name if I if I held. But yeah, it looked like a holding out there on that. That was a nice. It was a nice wall though. That was nice blocking scheme, everything. As a, the running back Gilchrist gained some yards there, but. So there is an Oldham County penalty. We'll take a quick break. Live from Belfield at Chris Lander Stadium. Thursday night football on Glycon. If your car's been damaged, regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. For dependable, friendly heating, cooling, electric, and plumbing service, it's Kinzer & Kinzer at 200 East Jefferson Street in LaGrange. Locally owned and operated since 1983. Call 502-222-0497. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. Chris Labar, Joey Hamilton, and our camera operator Mike Sumner back live at Belfield at Chris Lander Stadium. Thursday night football, a great one in store. Fern Creek plus three late in the third Oldham football after a penalty and a pair of Fern Creek injuries. You know, it's been real positive there for Oldham County. You know, they were two for two on fourth downs the first half. Now they just got another first down here on fourth down. And then they shoot themselves in the foot here with another hold. Uh, spot foul, 10 yards from the spot. So, you know, we'll see what they can overcome this. But, you know, don't forget, they still have Hami Barrero, number 20, the kicker. You know, if they can get uh, – I'd say about another 15, 20, nah, about 20 yards, 20 yards more. And they don't get the first down. If it's fourth and one, if they don't go for it, he does have the leg to he has the leg to maybe tie this one up. Look at our schedule tomorrow night. Four in store for you on Glycon. The middle two, Audio, St. X and Mail, PRP, Bowling Green. Then we'll have Floyd and Silver Creek. Live video, Shelby County, who is uh, vastly improved this year. They'll take on an East Jesmond team. I'll be there alongside with Gary Satori tomorrow in Nicholasville. So four great games tomorrow in store on Glycod.com. That's going to be a real good game, uh, Bowling Green and PRP. You know, Bowling Green, uh, they're, you know, always a strong, strong team coming from that area. And PRP, they're a senior-lated team. You know, last year they lost in the first round of the playoffs to a good manual team. But all those kids came back, especially, you know, with their quarterback and 
Dixon, the receiver. So I think that I think that PRP is going to have a real test tomorrow. You're going to find out what the Panthers are made of of when they go to Bowling Green. Well, and uh, Saint X uh, Mail, uh, an interesting and a big game early for Mail. You know, uh, Chris Wolf's got his hands full. You know, he they're in uncharted territory. Yeah, they are. You know, they're in a spot where they he hasn't been since maybe 2010, 2011, his first second year. He's in a spot where, you know, he's going to find out real quick. And St. X, you know, they're wanting some revenge. And when I say revenge, I'll let this play go. Then I'll, I'll. Here's Davis back to throw. Here's the backside pressure and a great grab. That is Sidoris at the 20 yard line. A nice throw, nice catch. Good job building the confidence there, that young man. No, excuse that's me, that's, that's a Josh Soder. I beg your pardon. Yeah, Soder, Soder, the junior, 6'2 junior there. There's a nice catch there. He came back, and it's just building the confidence of Zach Davis. And as I was saying about the male Saints, you know, Saints won last year, but Saints, you know, they feel like they've got some catching up to do because they haven't won, won in a long time other than last year in that championship game. Second down and five, and Shepard gets the call, shakes the first. And moves the pile forward. He'll be just a bit shy of a first down. He stopped there by number 58, Travis Moten. Moten, he's a sophomore. You know, you got you got a lot of sophomores out here. You got the future is bright for the, these two teams. I mean, they got a lot of juniors and sophomores out here. You know, uh, Oldham County, they've done a great job. It's first and 20. And, you know, nice second down play there. Now they're third and short. Third, you know, third three. Third three and a half right here. So this is a big play for them right here. Big play. Just over two minutes in this third quarter. Isaac Bowman flanked down in that odd-looking formation here. He's going to be a lead blocker is Bowman, and trying to pave the way in Gilchrist is short. Yeah, that's a tough right there. Uh, number nine, you know, Mason Sidoris, uh, he uh, lost his man right there, and that was quick pressure that got in on the running back on Gilchrist right there. If he doesn't get in there, then Gilchrist doesn't have to cut inside. He can kind of stay outside and gain a few more yards. But they were overloaded there. There's a little power eye left there out of, out of the pistol. And this time looks like the power eye right out of the pistol right there. So fourth down and one. A big play in this game. Gilchrist up the middle, dragging tacklers, and it will be close. It looks like he didn't get that. I didn't want to jinx him and say they're three for three on fourth down, but I oh thought my. it. And uh, it was just, it was just, it wasn't a, wasn't a good, good call from the start. Uh, too much penetration there by Fern Creek right there, you know. And I don't know, I don't know if uh, Badero had enough leg for a spot right there. So, balls right there have been a 25, 30. Uh, you know, it's been a what a, thir a 20, about a 37 yarder. So he might have had opportunity, but. Let's see what this Oldham County defense does. They've been coming up big. You got two players. Oh, you got a player running here late, which is never a good sign. Edwards in a shotgun. He'll feed Malone and Malone. Tight inside for a couple. But back to your point about uh, Barrero, the Colonel kicker. Again, he's a newbie, fresh from the soccer team. And this game perhaps may come down to him in a pressure pack situation. Yeah, give, him, give his team a chance. You know, defense doing a great job right now, holding hold Malone. You know, Malone's had some big games, you know, even though in a losing situation he had a big game. So, you know, this defense is doing a really good job. You can tell they've come a long way. They, Coach, Coach McBroom has been working on it. Is this another timeout? If, if so, that'd be, two, that'd be two timeouts for Fern Creek. Play is stopped. Alan Gray, the official. I think he's going to tell us what's going on. We're going to reset the clock. 55 seconds. Looks like he's doing double nickel there, holding up the five. Is that 55 seconds? Possible? Five, five. There it is, 55 seconds, yeah. So they'll, they'll add 5.7 on the clock. Under a minute now in this quarter. Burn Creek led 9-6 at the turn. Still hanging on to this narrow margin. Ooh, nice play and right turf there. monster <laughs> will gobble up 
TJ Cothran. TJ looked like he had a little room right there, kind of slipped. It looks like it looks a little muddy, a little wet right there. It looks like it's a little moisture right there, but that's good for Oldham County right there as it makes it third down. It's had a defensive player right there on, on the – Johnny on the go. I'm looking for that wheel route. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Fern Creek is probably going to run, might put someone in motion there, let the inside guy do a wheel route, outside guy maybe do a, do a little curl route, may curl up inside. That's going to take us to the fourth, a big third down when we come back to Bell Field on Glycon. For your surprisingly great rates, Contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Leslie Gilly in Crestwood today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Visit your locally owned power equipment dealer, Anderson Sales and Service in Madison, Crestwood, and our newest location at 1675 Watterson Trail in Louisville. You're watching Oldham County High School's football from Glycod. Third down and eight coming up for Henry County. Check that Tefer Fern Creek from their 20-yard line. Tigers one and one on the season. High snap as Edwards will roll right. Facing pressure and Edwards needs eight. He'll be out across the 27. Where they mark him at? Did he step out early? No, he didn't step out. That's got to be a first down for them. And it will be a timely first down for Fern Creek. He had a couple linemen out there with him. He might as well run. Had a little open road there. There's no one open. Good job. Good defense coverage there by Old County's defensive backs there. You made the comment that Great Fern Creek's defense at times looked tired tonight. We'll see if the Colonels are well endurance because this is a big drive for them. That's huge for them, and uh, they've, they've come in and, and made play after play, some timely plays right there. That was a big third down play, but it's they've been a, more of a bend but don't break. You know, they've, they've given up a little bit of yardage here, but then again, they make the big plays when it's needed so far. Ramari Taylor flanked out bottom of your screen in the belly of Malone. Malone trying to bounce outside and brought down for a loss of a couple. Makai Blaking, the first to get there, and there are two flags. And Blaking makes a nice play as Malone tries to bounce outside on that. That was a heck of a job there by him. Malone looked like he had a like a head of steam there, and Blaking just came right out and just made a great, great play there, you know, sealing the edge down now. Let's see what all these flags are. Now they've done a good job. They've held they've held uh, Fern Creek to seven yards rushing here. So we'll we'll see what's going on. This is a big decision either way. As the Colonel's defense will force second and long, or perhaps Fern Creek will benefit. You never know when the pile scuffs up like that. You never know if it's offsetting penalties and the referees may just call it on both, or there's someone over there that just decided to be. Fern Creek personal foul on the Tigers. Belligerent. <laughs> I don't want to say belligerent, but yeah, uh, did something with not within the rules <laughs> to cause that flag. Let's say that. Josh Abel not going to like that. That's going to back his bunch deep inside. He'll mark it at the 15. Yeah, that's going to hurt them because you know they've only they've only thrown the ball for three yards. You know, <laughs> thrown the ball for three yards of passing. You know, and they've. They've had eight, 70 yards rushing, but they have not thrown the ball well. First down and a bunch for the Tigers. Here's an in around handoff. Nice and hold. Malone, oh, excuse me, that is. Number 26. Up down to the 28-yard line. It's Turner. Last name's Turner. It's McCurry and Holden with a handoff for Hern, Fern Creek. 26, Turner. Okay. We'll call him Turner. 26, Turner, I don't know. Not on any roster we were provided. There is a 28 
But anyway, that's a gain of about 13 yards, and it's third down and 12. And number 26 there. Uh, I don't have him on here. Third down and 12 for Creek. Holden again, and he is upended across the 30. So some of those penalty yards will come back, but it will be now fourth down and long. Short gain on the play. It'll be fourth and about eight. Was that for the Tigers? So the Colonels' defense, aided by the unsportsmanlike, will hold and Miller Brown back salivating over an attempted punt return off of the foot like the of Fern Creek's Andrew Beck. Back deep for the Colonels, number three, Miller Brown. Good opportunity here for the for the Oldham County uh, punt return team and the and the uh, offense get the ball here. A high snap, Beck. Beck able to boom it to Brown, and Brown gobbles it up at the 30. Oh, he's got a wall. Oh! It, there is a penalty as Brown weaves his way into Tiger territory, but a yellow hacky Brown behind the play. Nice catch there, way to handle the ball. One bounce, catches it, takes a stutter step right. Finds his wall to the left. Has a nice return there. The referee saw something over there. Looks like it's going to be a block in the back. The Colonels have had more untimely penalties this year than I think any team in the area. <laughs> they come at the worst possible times. Last week, negating touchdowns this week. Nice runs on the punt return there. And, you know, they get a couple first downs, get some really good field position, get a hold there. So, They've overcome it so far tonight, though. They've been doing well. They've, they've gotten down there. Oldham football still have three timeouts. An eternity on the clock at 9.51. From their 30. Bowman trying to bounce outside. He'll usher a stiff arm. There is a flag as Bowman out at the 35. I don't know if he's going to call that the outside receiver for Oldham County was not on the line of scrimmage because they had a three backs and the quarterback in the backfield. And call it legal motion. Ball start called against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Another untimely penal penalty there. So first down. Back-to-back -to -back penalties there. Coach McBroom is not going to be happy with that. And 15. Some guys probably will be running on Monday. <laughs> on the horizon for the Colonels. And Coach uh, working his guys before the game. He said, enough of the talk. I want you to show me. I love that. I and love that. And they have improved in some areas. Can they get over the hump? That's the question. Until First down at 15. Stretch. Stretch to Gilchrist. Gilchrist trying to bounce outside, and he'll break a tackle and navigate up the far sideline short of a first down. That's, that stretch play there when you got two two lead blockers and then you seal down because they're just guard tackle tight end or guard tackle receiver. And sometimes he comes in tight, sometimes he goes out wide. And then you got those two blockers right there and a, like in a power out right. It's it's nice set there, nice set, and they just stretch. They seal and take everything down. So a gain of 12 for Gilchrist as the Colonels have it second down and three. Stretch Gilchrist left. again, and this time smothered for no gain. Dropped a short loss. Got a 55 there, Darius Marshall, number 51, Kendrick Johnson, the punter. <laughs> <laughs> or so he said. <laughs> but it's funny. I was thinking that's all I could think of. Uh, you know, I always see the line and they say, oh, I'm a punter. I'm a receiver. I'm this guy. I'm this guy. And then the little guy's just laugh about it. You know, we just crack up. He said, oh, no, I'm the best punter on the team. I'm like, okay, okay. He said, God, oh, it's coach, coach just hold me back, man. Coach hold me back. I'm the best punter on the team. So I'm sure it's what he – he tells Coach Abel all the time anyway. This is a big play for both teams. Third down and three, a long three for the Colonels. So we slide under nine minutes and an Oldham I County timeout. It looks like they were bringing the pressure that time. Number 52 looked like he was coming there. 
That's going to be Antoine Denson. Look how he's doing a little blitz. I love this Thursday night football. Be right back. We need to do it all the time. Range Service Center is a professional automotive service center that aims to provide the highest level of customer satisfaction. Their team is dedicated to performing honest and ethical work. Their experienced technicians make affordably priced immediate and scheduled repairs. Plus, they offer 24-hour emergency roadside assistance and much more. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street or call 502-222-1673. LaGrange Service Center. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glacod. Well, Coach Hamilton, what do you diagram here? Uh, third and seven. The stretch play's been really good. But, you know, the little pass over the middle, that's where they've been successful, you know, a little play action. But actually they don't have anybody there unless they send one of those two backs straight up the middle there or right off tackle. Show a little play action to the big man. A third down and a long three. Davis back to throw. Cannot take a sack, but he did. That was huge Davis right there. In the Good five, coverage by number Fisher. two over there. Uh, down for the is that Landon Edwards? No, it's not Landon Edwards. That's number eight. I apologize. That's Jaden Samuels did a really good job on the back as uh, Oldham County tried to bring the back out of the backfield. And since he was fully covered, the quarterback had to pull the ball back down, and the Fern Creek defensive line did the rest. It's a loss of 16. But right now, that's just not, not part of who they are, and it's just tough for them. And, and McCready and, very thankful to get that off. However, a short punt up to the 43-yard line, net punt of 23 yards. Yeah, that's just huge right there for uh, for Oldham County that they, they they lose Sam Young, you know, and then they get a young guy in there, and it just changed the whole trajectory of the offense. But Oldham County will get better. I know Coach McBroom will make sure of that. So eight minutes remain. Fern Creek football inside the Colonel 45. They'll mark it at the 43. Again, all the scoring in this game occurring in the first half. Fern Creek open things with a Cam Trice punt block and a recovery and for a been, Tiger touchdown. That's been their offense. That's all they've had tonight. They've, they've had a punt block for a touchdown and, and a Oldham County miscue for a safety. They, their offense has not – or should I say the Oldham County defense done a great job. Sure has. Zach Holman, an 11-yard touchdown reception for OC. Here's a handoff. Instead, it's Edwards. Excuse me. It's Edwards will keep it for a gain of a couple. So do you call that a little wildcat action, or do you say the quarterback just quarterback key? I don't know. It looks, looks the same. You know, Edwards uh, put inserting him as a, basically itself as a third back in there, you know, so he has two blockers. But like I said, Fern Creek has not uh, offensively, they have not produced what they wanted. They've got three passing yards. You know, they've got they've got a nice, nice little rushing game, but Oldham County has outgained them. You know, at the end of the third quarter, they had, they had outgained 124 to yards to 70. So, second down and long. Edwards rolling right. He's going to sling it short. A great pass, and it's down at the 32. Did that ball pop out? No. That, oh, he's going to call incomplete, or is he going to call complete? The referee said the ball's on the ground. It looks like he's pointing on the ground. I believe it's going to be a catch, and then I think he said he dropped it. He, the referee pointed. He was. Throwing that hand down like the ball hit the ground. First down, Fern Creek. Oh, he's going to give it to him. Okay, nice. Nice job, nice job. Good call, Mr. Official. He's going to call it there. And that's one of those, that's a tough call right there. You know, because you know the whole Oldham County coaching staff, so they're right in his ears. And hey, it was on the ground. But, hey, he's right there. Nice call right there by the official. And that was a great, great throw by Landon. You know, Landon, Landon Edwards rolls to his right, throws a dart. And most quarterbacks that are right-handed, you know, Make really good throws on the on the run when they were. Kinsley Davis right. with that catch on first down at ten. There is a handoff. Holden and a flag thrown as Holden sashays well inside the Colonel red zone. But that's going to likely come back. Be a ten yard mark off. Looks like there's another flag where the ball ball cat. Uh, the ball carrier was tackled. There sure is. There's also a flag at the Colonel 23. Two holds on them. Two holds on the offense. Oh, a face mask on the defense. 
Offsetting, we're going to replay that one Offsetting all over. Penalties, holding against the offense, face mask against the defense. They'll replay the down. Tough break there for the Oldham County defense. You know, they get opportunity to uh, push the Fern Creek offense back. And then they shoot themselves in the foot again with another penalty. Fern Creek's got to be thankful for that, so we're going to play it all over again. First down. First down and 10 from the 32. As Holden back for loss of a couple. They had no place to go right there. And Oldham County defense Drop player just play. is made sure. Down by number 55, Wade Metling. Metley comes in and just shuts it down. He and David Turner. David Turner comes up and makes sure as well that he gains no more than he doesn't make a gain at all, lose a yard in that. So good good job getting the, that, that Oldham County defense. They're, they're playing lights out. Turner having a big game, an interception in the first half. And Edwards going to roll right, slides back against the grain, and then Ooh. we'll good slide job down the at the 32. Fred Scarborough. Fred Scarborough come in with the backside pressure right there. When you're a quarterback right there, I always, the <laughs> always kind of cringe right there because a lot of times defense. that's when those backside hits Turnbull. come when those guys are flying full speed. The quarterback stops and turns his body in there. Fortunately, he didn't fumble that, get hit blindside or fumble that one. So another big play here for the Oldham County defense. He got third down and eight. Again, Colonel still two, two timeouts remaining. It's Coach Josh Abel and the Tigers very deliberate, and who can blame them as they try to milk some valuable seconds in this fourth quarter. Tigers he, trying to win two of their first three. Colonels looking for their first win. Getting it to their man. He's got room to run. And he is going to be brought down close to the marker. He'll leapfrog a carrier, blaking there. And it will be close to the stick. Looks like he's a little short. Depends on where they spot it, but it looks like he's a little Flash short. Spot there. He fell short, but uh, referee, where is he going to spot that one at? Oh, it looks like they're going to measure that one. Got a Fern Creek injury as well. Far sideline Tigers have been uh, badly cramping tonight. And one of their student athletes being attended to on the far sideline is Coach Josh Abel will look on. The fourth and one there. Probably going to do what they've been doing, give it to the bread and butter guy. Looks like he's been holding this, uh, or is it Turner? Is it holding or is it Turner, 26? I'm not sure. No, we're not, we don't have a 26, but I, I haven't seen much of Michael Malone here no, on this no, drive. Not at all, not at all. And it. You know, it reminds me of a you know a previous game I saw. You kind of go with the uh, you know I watched the uh, Great Crossing Warhawks last week, and they were having a little trouble against that North Oldham defense. And then they decided to just kind of hand the ball up the middle, uh, do a little trap play there, and they that was the only thing that they really got going. But they just stayed consistent with it. They said, forget the pass, forget this, forget that, and they stayed with it. And they ended up uh, pulling out a victory, it was hard fought victory, and. Uh, but, you know, I think that's what Fern Creek's going to do right here. I think they're just going to put number 26 right there to the right of the quarterback then hand it to him, let him go left, and, you know, it's fourth and one. That's been that's been what they've uh, got. That's what they've been getting upfield with. That's what they've been their little bread and butter this series, their, this drive. And if you're the Colonels, you certainly want to uh, anything but a touchdown where you can give your offense a chance. Perhaps the Colonels' offense will have one more crack in this game. Yeah, the Fern Creek Tigers, they are using that clock right now. They've they've used up a lot of time there. It was they're doing a good job of that at the moment. Looks like it'll be fourth and short. So fourth, fourth down offense. and about a yard the for the Tigers. And you don't want to jump here. From the Oldham. I don't think Fern Creek is gonna give a dummy call. I think they're just gonna run a play, but you don't want to jump for Oldham County. And the Oldham 23-yard line, Edwards hands on hips, awaiting a bare front there. The snap. Covering the three three down line in the bare front. And the referee's got that hand up in the back. Looks like could be delay a game unless he calls timeout. Is he not a 
Boy, you're right on that, Joey. Yeah, timeout the there. The Fern Creek timeout. Yeah, and if you watch that back official, he puts that hand up back there. And then if you're, if you're you know, most coaches have a time guy, and they're like, tell me when that guy, he'll, he'll, do, he'll go five, four, three, two, and then throw that flag. But once he throws that hand up, you're at the five-second mark. So most coaches, they have a guy standing right there next to the coach, and you kind of just punch coach in the shoulder like, they're at five, coach. So, you know, call it head coach, timeout. You know, and so uh, that, that's that's you know it's a good job there by Coach Abel there. You know, trying to run the clock down, and it's a good job by the Oldham County defense not to jump. That shows discipline on their side. So it's going to be an interesting call here. Like I said, I believe you know their bread and butter. They just been putting uh, number twenty six there on the right and just letting him go off tackle on the left. That's what they've been successful and positive with right there. Southern County defensive, they've done a really, really good job. You know, they haven't given up a touchdown. Right, they haven't given up anything. Colonel defense trying to do it one more time. <laughs> Clock will run now at the snap. And it's a keeper and a first down as Edwards, Edwards straight the up the gut will move Picks the sticks. He'll pick up four. Players. First down and and 10. nothing wrong Turn with that. Creek. As I say, a little wild car, wildcat slash quarterback keep. And since he is the quarterback, I guess you can't really call it the wildcat, but that was uh, easy money right there. You give it to the quarterback, that way you have the extra blocker, and you overload one side or the other and gain two yards as you need. And first down Fern Creek with under three minutes here. Creek clearly going to keep this on the ground here. Yes, Edwards in a gun. Again, no Michael Malone on this series. Edwards right up the gut. And he'll pick up a few kernels Edwards with two timeouts carry. remaining. Brought down by 34, Lambert, and number 55, Wade Metling. Excuse me on that time. It, I thought it was under play. three. It's right at three minutes and 30 seconds. Tigers. I apologize. There's time that they can keep him out of the end zone. But when do you start using those timeouts, Coach? I think after, after this play, after right? Third, yeah, after third, yeah, third down. down. Got to well, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, even if it's third and one, you you've got it. You've got to stop the clock. The clock is is against you right now. Tiger is trying to improve to two and one on the year. Defeated J-Town in blowout fashion week one. Edwards again, and boy, he's going to lunge forward again. It's going to take a couple of kernels to bring him down, and he is close to a first down. down. And it will be a first down. First and goal. And that's that's tough. That's oh, tough for Oldham County's defense because when you give it to the quarterback and he's an athlete like that back that there, that's the that's uh you know, that's an extra guy that's not accounted for that, that Fern Grant Creek Turner. has to use to block block the defense. So a lot of times when you give it to a running back, you know, that quarterback's back there and you're about even numbers there, but when the quarterback keeps it, that's an extra guy and it it's just a number it's a numbers game and it's not in your favor. First and goal from the eight. Things getting dire for OCs. Fern Creek trying to run out the final two plus. Same play call again. He's got to protect that ball. Now, if I'm Oldham County, I'm trying to strip, strip, Edwards strip. Carry. I'm sure Coach Abel's told us to land in Edwards, hold on to that football. But, you know, the Colonels, I'd, one guy grab him, the other guy tries to strip him, the other guy try to make the tackle there. We'll have it from the six. It appears second down and goal. Tackle him, you grab his shoulders, you strip the ball. Again, Oldham still two timeouts. Fern Creek does not have to snap this ball till inside of 130. And I think this one is going to give it to the no, he's going to keep it. Same play call this time. Edwards to the right. He'll bounce it back inside. Good job by the defense. And the Colonels will 55 meddling on that call right timeout. Good Short job the by line. him. Timeout on the field. Third and goal here, I believe. By the Colonels. Minute 23. Both teams with one timeout in the fourth quarter. 
And even if Fern Creek doesn't WKC score here on your way out. and they go for it on fourth down and don't make it, that still and leaves the, the right Colonels 90-plus yards to try to score. And, then, and if they use – they you just used a timeout, and if they only have one timeout left or if they have no timeouts left, that's a that's a tall task, a tall task for a young quarterback and a young group. But, you know, like I said, anything's possible. But, you know, that that's where that's how you learn. Zach Davis, he'll be learning on the fly and, and – uh, if, if Oldham County can hold him here, call another timeout. Fern Creek doesn't get it. Zach Davis will have a tough task, but that's where you earn the stripes. It's been a good ball game, both teams with some building blocks moving forward. And Oldham County's defense has been so good all night, but when they've needed it the most, Fern Creek, at least thus far, has been able to hang on to the possession. Third and goal Tigers doing everything on the ground. They Not did have one pass play. Kinsley Davis caught his first ball of the evening, their leading receiver. But the rest has been on the ground. And it's third down and goal from the four. The coach stuck to his convic convictions on the run. This time they'll hand off Cothran. And it's fourth and goal. Number nine, TJ Cothran on the carry. Cotham gets going to call a timeout here. It's going to be fourth down. Minute 16. It's not a lot of time, but, you know, you just hope you hope to make a good stop here Colonels. and get the ball. Or if you can strip goal, the ball. The yeah. line for but the I'm Tigers. sure Coach Abel is over there telling him, hold on to the ball. I don't care if you get the first down, touchdown, anything. You know, it's first. It's it's in goal, so you either get a touchdown or you give the ball up. But I don't care if you get the touchdown or not, just hold on to the ball. Now, Fern Creek does have a very good kicker, Andrew Beck, a senior. Yeah, he's one for one on field goals, made one from 37 this year. Yeah, Beck, do you, do you consider really that yeah. as well? Do you want to yeah, – it depends on how you feel about your defense. You know, at, at this point, if if I'm coaching Fern Creek, Oldham County's offense hasn't shown enough for me. So I could I could just hand the ball off. If we don't get it, I would feel safe. I would – Really, not want to kick that, have it blocked, and, four. and score. I That's really would not want that. But no, but the kicker the Andrew Beck, the senior, you know, he's play. he's on fire all year. He's got what? Let's he's go. a 11 for 11 on extra points. Make he's had a field goal, hurt. one for one. You know, he's he's uh he's perfect. That's a scenario, but uh, certainly Coach Abel will heed your suggestion, Joey, and the offense staying on the field. Fourth and goal from the four. It looks like they'll probably give it to number eight right here. Or number Sean nine, Nolan is oh, they're in. throwing it. They sure are going to throw it in the end zone, and it's <laughs> incomplete. Hey. Turnover on down. Coach Abel's a gambler. It'll be first and goal. Coach I did not expect that. <laughs> I didn't expect it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a big gamble right there. You know, I mean, you know, fortunately for him, nothing nothing traumatic happened. But, you know, anything, you know, he tipped that ball, receiver, fall down. DB picks it Colonel. and takes it, you know, 100. And, well, in high school, you're in the end zone. You can't take it out. So, so it, it is a safe play. You know, if it throws in the end zone, the kid, in, the young man intercepts it, it's touchback. Be right back. Lycod.com. Colonel football first down at 10. Thursday. Your car's been damaged. Regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays, 9 to 5, at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop, collision repair for the people. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. Oldham football momentarily an injured cornerback for Oldham on that pass breakup. Look like cramps. There have been uh, several of those this evening. Hot, humid evening. It's gotten much more comfortable as the evening has continued, but a very, very hot start here in week three of the high school football season. So, Joey, when the Oldham offense takes the field, they'll have it at their four, no timeouts. What's their plan? Uh, uh, tight end down the middle, maybe a draw play to, a big, hand maybe a draw play to your big man, uh, 
Shepard because they're expecting Gilchrist to get the ball. First down and 10, you know, if they could, you know, line. I, they haven't come back to the Travis Edgar end around. They haven't come to that, you know, and you know, there's always, you know, the, the hook and ladder, you know, something down there, you know, throw it 10 yards and pitch it to someone. I, I, I you know, I don't, you're down here, you're down here in terrible, terrible field position. You got a young quarterback. Davis back to throw. And he's looking for Edgar for an incomplete pass. Be second down. A lot of pressure on him right there. He got quick pressure, and that's what Fern Creek's going to do. They're going to bring the extra man. He doesn't know where it's coming from. And they're going to play man coverage there. They're playing man coverage and bringing the extra defender. Put a little pressure on, on the young quarterback there. And that's, that's, kinda, that's a tough task for him. That's that was Waylon Starr, by the way, the injured Colonel Waylon in his first game of the year. Coming off a couple of injuries. Waylon's done a good job out there tonight. Had some real good coverage. Trips to the near side. Davis. No pressure this time. Cannot take a sack. Of course, he's going to jet. There's a flag. And Davis out Davis calls his own at the six-yard line. Good there's job there, Davis, the getting out of bounds. He kind of left the pocket a little earlier, but that's to be expected by a young quarterback. He's not used to that situation. But made a positive out of it. Gained some yards there, unfortunately. For the Oldham County Colonels, it looks like it's going to be a holding by one of their linemen. Holding's the call against the Colonels. And they marked uh, half the distance from that spot. Yeah, so they don't have much room to go back at half the distance from you know from the from the four. So, and that time Fern Creek did not bring pressure. They settled back and the into more coverage that time and did a Creek good job of covering. Down, and that's what gave Davis a little opportunity to run the ball, a little freedom, but. Uh, they got a long way to go. Still second and about 10 officially from the Oldham. Two, Davis back to throw, and Elkins with a catch right at the first down marker. Complete to Jackson Elkins. Nice throw That's there. For another Colonel, first down. So that'll give Oldham a little breathing room. Clock idle now at 53 and a nickel. Now he's got to call the play and hurry up and get on the line. But that's a nice throw, nice catch there. Davis looking for Elkins again. Davis and a misfire. Good, good job, though. That, that, that's, that's actually a that positive for him right there to throw it out. Second out of 10, throw it in Elkins' area down. and throw it out of bounds. And that way you stop the clock and come back and huddle up. Call two plays, maybe three, and uh, you know tell the guys, hey, we're going to do this, going to do this, going to do this. You know, get up there on the line and, and call and go. And, you know, I know time isn't on their side, but, you know, quarterback draw here wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you could get those ah. two two tackles, uh, those two defense tackles, block them out. Trips to the near side is Davis. A lot of arm strength and a great oh. throw. Bowman could not run under it for an incomplete pass. A nice pass That's right there. Bowman nice pass. And Bowman kind of looked, looked out to see who was in front of him right there, and I think it, it held him up just a touch. But that was a really nice throw there. Great throw there by Zach Davis. And he was pretty wide open on that. That's one of those uh, one of those curls or where he just kind of was inside and came back outside. That would have been a huge play. We put him out there past the 35. It could have been out of bounds, too. Dugan is in for Oldham. He is a sophomore backup quarterback. Perhaps he's got a stronger arm. We're going to find out here. And he's going to sling it across. Oh. Incomplete pass, pass for Bowman. The so the final play of the evening, the unless Colonels. the Colonels well, Bowman, can advance uh, on a first down. Bowman, Bowman's open on that. Could have got a little more on that. Bowman might have caught it across the middle because the defensive players were not that close to him. And he may have been to turn up the right sideline. Now, whether he scores or not, I don't know. But he had an excellent opportunity. Gains a lot of positive yards and possibly get out of bounds. Kingston Dugan back in for the Colonels on fourth down and 10. Trips to the near side as Oldham going empty here. Bring the blitz here. And Dugan going to heave it down the middle of the field. Looking for Edgar, and it's picked. Intercepted by Damari Taylor for Fern Creek. Dugan's pass intercepted by number four. That's another interception there for Taylor. Taylor uh, Taylor's had a couple touchdowns. He's had a touchdown this year. Had some catches there. And uh, had a couple solo tackles versus Johnson Central. Now he's got an interception to add to his resume. 
So Fern Creek will take a knee and hang on to a 9-6 win tonight over the Colonels. Hard-fought battle there. Like I said, I saw a lot of good things on both sides on the interior line. Those guys were battling up front. And the Oldham County defense did a really, really good job. You know, a coach can hang his hat on that. I know he doesn't like to take the loss, but he can hang his hat on that. They did not give up a touchdown. That defense, you know, put, pitched a shutout tonight. Did a really good job. Really offense good job. ran the ball well, but kudos to Fern Creek for a hard-fought win tonight at Belfield at Chris Lander Stadium. Yeah, they did. They had a lot. You know, they had double the amount of offensive plays. They out, out gained them at least by 50, 60 yards. They just could not get the ball in the end zone. Tayshawn McBroom conversing with referee Alan Gray on the way to the handshake line. You know, I know it, it's, it's not ethical to say, but, you know, you take the special teams out of this and you take the, the snap over the head, and we're looking at possibly overtime here. Fern Creek wins tonight, 9-6. Be right back. Summer is here. That puts a lot of strain on your air conditioner. Are you ready? Call Thompson Heating and Cooling today for an HVAC checkup. Because the last time you want to find out your air conditioner isn't working is when you really need it. At Thompson, we offer a two-hour appointment window so you won't be kept waiting all day. We're fully stocked and prepared, and 90% of our calls are repaired that day. And as always, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call us today for express service. Founded in 1910 in the Ohio Valley region, German American Bank has been raising the standards in banking, insurance, investments, and wealth management for over a century. We're big enough to provide the conveniences of modern banking, yet small enough to care about the people and communities we serve. Because we believe that when a community thrives, its people prosper. Strengthening our community since 1910. German American Bank. Welcome to WDRB Home Design here at Watts Home Center. Today we're talking lighting, specifically outdoor lighting with Maddie. What are some of the obstacles your clients face with outdoor lighting? Well, anybody can really come in here and just pick out a fixture for the way that it looks. However, the real obstacle comes in knowing how many to use, where the placement needs to be, and what type of fixture to use to really bring emphasis to those focal points outside their home. And the Watts team can help with this. Yes, of course. We actually have designers like myself and electricians on hand here so we can really help our customer from the start to finish of the whole design and installation process. Tell us about the range of light fixtures that you have here. Yeah, so here at Watts Home Center we carry various interior decorative fixtures, exterior fixtures, landscape fixtures, and commercial luminaires. We've really been able to help our customer find any type of fixture they're looking for. And that's WDRB Home Design here at Watts Home Center. Tonight's post-game recap is brought to you by Watts Home Center. Whether it's building, restoring, or improving your home, visit the experts at Watts, 2350 Commerce Parkway in LaGrange. Watts Home Center, design that feels like home. 9-6, the final Fern Creek 2-1 Oldham County falls to 0-3. And, and uh, Joey, this game right there for the taking, but uh, too many special teams issues for OC. Yeah, OC just had, had opportunities. Uh, offense uh, at 124 yards tonight of rushing. You know, did a really good job there. You know, 169 total yards. Defense did an excellent job. You know, did not give up a touchdown. You know, when you're on defense and you pitch a shutout, and you still lose, you know. Uh, you know, I'm sure Coach McBroom was down there with his group at midfield uh, here after the game in the huddle, telling his, his guys, you know, how much better they've done. And don't don't hang your head. You know, we've come a long way since that first game. So you know, just keep battling, keep battling, keep battling. You know, next week they've got they're at Meade County, so uh, you know, I'm sure that they're gonna. That's something. You know, they get an extra day off, and uh, I'm sure they're looking forward to that. 
Or you see the uh, recap. Cameron Trice, that uh, punt block huge in this game, got Fern Creek off to a great start. That, you know, in the first quarter when they do that, that's, that's, only, that's basically the only points that Fern Creek physically scored. You know, uh, uh, you've got you got Samuels that blocks it, then Samuels picks it. I mean, um, yeah, Samuels blocks it and picks it up. And, you know, it's 631 in the first quarter, and, and that's it. That I mean, the safety, that, that's not the Fern Creek team scoring. That's – that's a miscue by by Oldham County, unfortunately, and and so like I said, the defense shut out. You know they did a good job. You know did a really good job. Zach Holman, eleven yard touchdown reception, and then the uh, safety off the errant Oldham County snap. So the final tonight, Fern Creek over Oldham County nine six. Be right back on Glycod.com. Welcome to WDRB Home Design here at Watts Home Center. Today we're talking ways to give your home a facelift. Jim, what are some updates and trends for doors this season? The most popular door of the year so far has been this three quarter six light shown here as a double French door. I've sold this in this configuration, a door with side lights, a single door. People are loving the natural light this year. In addition to doors, windows are another great way to update your home, right? Absolutely. There's no better way to increase your home's energy efficiency than new windows and if you're about to sell your house nothing looks better on a property listing than new windows so can you and your team provide me an estimate to match my particular budget absolutely with multiple products and vendors we can work with your budget to get your home the product it needs the watts home center team can answer all of your window and door questions so come on out and see them here in lagrange or go to wattshomecenter.com to learn more Looking for sound, prudent financial advice? Did you know that one of the brightest and best financial advisors is in your own backyard? Robin Lawson of Financial Solutions Incorporated has a mission to understand your long-term goals and to create a specific strategy just for you. Robin understands the challenges that face most of us today and offers fresh, out-of-the-box thinking that can put you on the road to financial freedom. Contact Robin Lawson today at 502-225-9900. That's 502-225-9900 or visit LawsonFinancial.net. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Colossians 3.23. Stinnett Plumbing. Proudly serving Oldham County with a complete array of services from faucet fixes to bathroom renovations. Locally owned, built on integrity, and committed to bringing exceptional quality work to you. On call 24 hours a day for emergency repairs. Phone 502-690-3070. Stinnett Plumbing. LaGrange Service Center is a professional automotive service center that aims to provide the highest level of customer satisfaction. Their team is dedicated to performing honest and ethical work. Their experienced technicians make affordably priced immediate and scheduled repairs. Plus, they offer 24-hour emergency roadside assistance and much more. Located at 409 West Jefferson Street or call 502-222-1673. LaGrange Service Center. Research has shown high school sports to be a great community influence. Join scores of local businesses that have partnered with Glycod in sponsoring live, hometown-oriented sports programming on our video and social media platforms. For more information, email info at glycod.com. You're watching Oldham County High School's Football from Glycod. Back live at Belfield, Chris Lander Stadium, Fern Creek 9, Oldham County 6. We talked about the Colonels in the last segment, but uh, Fern Creek, I, I tell you what, despite the two turnovers, some good building blocks for Coach Abel. They played well at times tonight. Uh, Coach Abel had a stable of running backs, including his quarterback, where they just decided we are not going to pass the ball, we're just going to run the ball. And uh, they end up rushing for 126 yards as a team, about 33 carries, and you know, we thought that the main man was going to be uh, Michael Malone, but it ended up being uh, number 26. I, I think his last name's Turner. They said Turner on the intercom. But anyway, they started giving to him. And then the quarterback, late late in the game, he just started keeping it right up the middle. And so, uh, you know, there's real positive for him. You know, even though they did lose the turnover battle, they, you know, they still won the game. And that's, you know, that's what coach can hang his hat on and say, hey, we, we lost the turnover battle, still got the W, so there's room for improvement. You know, there's places where we can get better overall. You know, didn't throw the ball very well, but had no fumbles, just the two interceptions, and and like I said, uh, and and kept and kept 
the Oldham County kept, kept the Oldham County offense out of the end zone except for one series. So. Nine six final shot. score. Most outstanding players and a look at next week and uh, tomorrow night's schedule when we come back after this. Your car's been damaged. Regardless of make or model, visit the experts at Roy's Body Shop. Roy's is locally owned and operated with free towing and lifetime warranty on all collision repairs. Plus, they provide deductible savings for every insurance claim. Open weekdays 9 to 5 at 2604 Highway 146 in LaGrange. Give them a call at 502-222-0948 or online at roysbodyshop.com. Roy's Body Shop. Collision repair for the people. A lot goes into taking care of your property. You need equipment with more durability, versatility, and number one rated reliability built in. Like Kubota compact tractors that can do it all right, Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut, and the Sidekick utility vehicle built for hard work and fun at 40 miles per hour. Kubota equipment lives up to the highest standards. Yours. Visit your local dealer today. Founded in 1910 in the Ohio Valley region, German American Bank has been raising the standards in banking, insurance, investments, and wealth management for over a century. We're big enough to provide the conveniences of modern banking, yet small enough to care about the people and communities we serve. Because we believe that when a community thrives, its people prosper. Strengthening our community since 1910. German American Bank. For dependable, friendly heating, cooling, electric, and plumbing service, it's Kinzer & Kinzer at 200 East Jefferson Street in LaGrange. Locally owned and operated since 1983. Call 502-222-0497. Surprisingly great rates? Contact your local State Farm agent today. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Leslie Gilly in Crestwood today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're watching Oldham County High School's football from Glycod. And welcome back for the final time tonight at Bell Field. Fern Creek hangs on 9-6. Over Oldham County now for the most outstanding players presented by State Farm Insurance Agent Leslie Gilly for Fern Creek Cameron Trice after that big punt block and touchdown for the Colonels. Could have gone a few different ways. Grant Gilchrist gets the honor. Yeah, Grant Gilchrist had 20 carries, 87 yards, uh, average over 4.3 yards a carry. You know, he led his team. You know, he did did what he's supposed to do. You know, he did as much as he could do. He had some really nice runs. Uh, Oldham County just got hampered on some of those really nice runs by penalties. You know, he'd gain a 15, 20-yard gain, and next thing you know, it's pulled back because of a holding right there. So, and that's what Coach McBroom is going to have to work on. You know, you said the timely penalties. They, the timely penalties is what kind of did Oldham County in tonight, and if they can, you know, negate some of those timely penalties, uh, you know, they can they can thrust them into the uh, into the win column. More high school football tomorrow night on Glycod. Four games, top and bottom live, high def video. Floyd Central and Silver Creek, and then Shelby County and East Jess. In the middle two should be outstanding. We'll have those on the audio side, St. X Mail and PRP and Fern Creek. Good battles. Good should battles be a there. great night. Great day high school football today for Joey Hamilton, Mike Sumner, and executive producer, I'm Steve Burr. Good night from Chris Labar Stadium Do or it. something like that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, Chris said Thursdays. We're doing Thursdays. Chris Labar's He's in charge. <laughs> Give us Thursdays. Every Thursday, we're in. See you next time on Glycod. Good night. From Glycod, this has been Roy's Body Shop, Oldham County High School's football. Roy's Body Shop in the Grange. Collision repair for the people. Tonight's game was also brought to you by Anderson Sales and Service in Crestwood, making your life easier with quality products and quality service. Watts Home Center, design that feels like home. Thompson Heating and Cooling, 
making people comfortable. LaGrange Service Center, quality car care since 1964. State Farm Insurance Agent Leslie Gilly, and by Mortensen Family Dental. For schedule information about our upcoming broadcasts, visit our website, glicod.com, Facebook and Twitter, at Glycod. We thank you for tuning in to this live sports presentation from Glycod.